championship game between the Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions. Brought to you by America's most widely acclaimed new car, the bold new Pontiac and your authorized Pontiac dealer. Good afternoon, football fans. This is Bill McColgan speaking to you from Briggs Stadium in Detroit, Michigan, where this afternoon the Browns and the Lions battle it out for the world supremacy of professional football. Both the Lions and the Browns are seeking to add luster to already glorious comebacks this year. The Lions, after winning the Western Division title in 1954, dropped all the way to the cellar in 55. A gallant effort to return to the top fell one game short just a year ago, when they lost the division crown to the Chicago Bears. But this season, under their new head coach, George Wilson, the Lions made it all the way back, and they did it the hard way. In their last four games, they had to come up with victories over the Green Bay Packers, the Browns, the Chicago Bears, and the San Francisco 49ers. The Lions have definitely been a second-half football team over that span. In the second half of those four games, they have allowed a total of only 13 points while scoring 76 themselves. Last week's comeback of San Francisco was truly one of the most courageous chapters in pro football history. Trailing 27-7 early in the third period, the Lions refused to give up. They kept fighting back and finally won it by a score of 31-27. to And that's the reason they're here in Briggs Stadium this afternoon meeting the Browns. The Browns' comeback was of a different type. They won the championship in 1955, but fell to fourth place in the Eastern Division last year with a record of 5-7. and seven. Some experts said it would be at least five years before the Browns would be back in the title picture. Few gave them a chance of making it this year. But the squad, which includes 12 rookies and five second-year men, had other ideas. They beat the defending champion New York Giants 6-3 to three in the regular season opener, and that was the psychological lift they needed. Having beaten the champs, they felt they could go all the way. They did, but it wasn't easy. They had to come from behind to beat Los Angeles in a real pressure game at Cleveland, and also to tie the Redskins in another one at Washington. They were led by Tommy O'Connell, a quarterback who many said was too small to make the grade in the professional ranks. It was said that O'Connell didn't have the speed or, nor the maneuverability to cope with the present-day defenses and throw football. Well, Tommy answered those critics by leading the National Football League in passing as he sparked the Browns to the Eastern Division crown. Speaking of O'Connell, he suffered a severe ankle sprain in one of the final games of the year, this one against the Chicago Cardinals, when he was tackled from behind by Leo Sugar. O'Connell has not seen action since then, but he, of course, has been working out with the Browns for the past couple of weeks, and he has been nominated by head coach Paul Brown to start in this big football game this afternoon. Tommy, of course, during his collegiate days at the University of Illinois, was the Big Ten's top passer. The Browns and the Lions are no newcomers to the championship game. They have met no fewer than three times in the past six years. They battled it out at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland in 1952, Detroit winning that one by a score of 17 to 7. Doak Walker, now retired, came up with a big play in that football game, a 67-yard touchdown run. The next year, the scene changed to here at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. That was 1953, when the Lions again defeated the Browns 17-16. Lou Groza of the Browns kicked three field goals, and Chick Chigaty scored a touchdown for Cleveland, but the Lions won it in the final minutes on a 33-yard pass play from Bobby Lane to Jim Doran. Back in Cleveland in 1954, Otto Graham was the big gun, running for three touchdowns, passing for the same number as the Browns defeated the Lions 56-10. And here again this afternoon. It's the Browns and the Detroit Lions battling it out for the World Football Championship. A crowd of more than 56,000 expected here at Briggs Stadium this afternoon. Standing room has been allowed by Commissioner Burt Bell, so that puts the crowd up over 56,000. It, however, is not the largest crowd in Briggs Stadium history for a football game, as some 58,000 came here to see the San Francisco 49ers meet the Lions back in a regular season game in 1954. It's a good day for football. The sun is shining here in Detroit. The temperature is 32 degrees, and the wind 18 miles an hour from the west southwest. The Cleveland Browns, in the toss about 15 minutes ago, won it, as Mike McCormick, their offensive captain, called it. And they'll receive the opening kickoff. They'll defend the north goal. Detroit will kick and will defend the south goal. The Detroit uh, Lions come into the game with a record of 9-4. and four. The Browns have won 9, lost 2, and tied 1. We'll return with the starting lineups in just a moment. 
Right now, your Pontiac dealer has the answer for those of you who are looking for a low-priced car. Got those small car blues? Then here's good news. The Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price three, and for less money. It's bigger. The Pontiac beats them in size with a whopping 122-inch wheelbase. It's more powerful. Pontiac beats them in power with dual action Tempest 395 performance. It's more advanced. Pontiac beats them with the boldest engineering advances in 50 years and luxury. Matching interiors, even wild to wild carpeting. Let your Pontiac dealer show you why. The Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price free for less money. See your Pontiac dealer soon. Lions head coach George Wilson is in his first year in that capacity. He took over as boss of the Lions just two days before the preseason schedule opened when Buddy Parker suddenly resigned. Parker, of course, later went on to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the job that Wilson turned in with the Detroit team definitely must be considered as one of the top coaching jobs of the year. Wilson played professional football with the Chicago Bears, but he has been in the Detroit organization for the last nine seasons. Of course, most football fans the nation over are familiar with the record of Paul Brown. His coaching record covers service at Severn Prep down in Maryland, where one of his A-stars was Slade Tunter. Then he returned to his native Massillon, Ohio. From there, he moved on to Ohio State, then to the Great Lakes Naval Training Station during World War II, and he has been head coach of the Cleveland team since 1946 when the club was organized as a member of the now-defunct All-America Conference. In that time, the Browns have been out of a title game just once. During their four years in the All-America Conference, they won the conference championship on all four occasions. They entered the National Football League in 1950, and since then, have been in the title game in all seasons except last year, when they finished with a 5-7 and seven record and finished fourth place in the Eastern Division. That record, incidentally, marked the first time that a Paul Brown coach team lost more games than it won. We spoke a while ago about Tommy O'Connell, the Browns quarterback, and of course the big boy in the Detroit attack this afternoon will be Tobin Groth, who has succeeded Bobby Lane as quarterback of the Detroit Lions. And now, our national anthem. The color guard is now marching out to the flag pole, which is in center fielder at Briggs Stadium for the baseball season. And now the combined high school bands international anthem. to introduce to you a young fellow from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, whom you've heard on many coast-to-coast -coast sports broadcasts. He's been in the business for some 21 years, starting at the age of 17. For the past two years, he has been handling the telecast of the Green Bay Packers. It's my pleasure to introduce for the play-by-play -play in the first period and the starting lineup, Ray Scott. Thank you very much, Bill McCoggan, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. And welcome, by way of NBC Radio, to this professional world championship game. Let's waste no further time. Let's tell you about the probable starting lineups. When the visiting Cleveland Browns have the ball, Art Hunter of Notre Dame will be the center. At the guard positions will be Jim Ray Smith from Baylor. At the left guard, 
And at the right guard, we expect to see Herschel Forrester, but they may change around. Herschel from Southern Methodist. At the tackles, the veteran and great Lou Groza. At left tackle, Lou from Ohio State. At right tackle, Mike McCormick from the University of Kansas. At the end positions, Pete Brewster. Daryl Pete Brewster of Purdue at left end. Preston Carpenter of Arkansas at right end. In the backfield, Tommy O'Connell, of whom Bill McCorgan has already spoke, will be at quarterback. Tommy from the University of Illinois. At the running back positions, the great Jimmy Brown, unanimous rookie of the year this year at fullback. Chet Hanulak at the other running back position from Maryland, and Ray Renfro will be a flanker. Ray, the speedster from North Texas State. When the Detroit Lions have the ball, up front it will be at center, Frank Gatsky. At the guards, Hardy Sewell and Stan Campbell. We'll tell you more personal statistics later. At the guard, at the tackles, Lou Kreekmer and Charlie Arney. At the ends, Jim Doran and Steve Junker. Ken Russell may start in place of Charlie Arney at right tackle. In the offensive backfield, Tobin Roach at quarterback. At the running back positions, Gene Gedman and John Henry Johnson. And the flanker, Howard Hopalong Cassidy. There will be others in that offensive cast as well for the Detroit Lions. Defensively, the Browns will use Bill Quinlan and Len Ford at tackles, Bob Gain and Don Colo at the guards. The linebackers will be Vince Costello, Walt Michaels, and Galen Fitz. In the defensive backfield, Warren Lahr, Kenny Conn, Junior Wren, and Don Paul. Defensively, the Detroit Lions will use up front. At the end positions, Darius McCord and Gene Cronin. At the tackles, Ray Krause and Gil Maines. The linebackers will be Joe Schmidt and their defensive captain, Bob Long and Roger Zatkoff. In the defensive backfield, we expect to see Carl Karalevitz and Jack Christensen at the corners and playing the deep spots, Yale Larry and Terry Barr. If you follow the Lions and are wondering about Jim David, he has been handicapped by an injury. He may or may not start. That's the way we expect to see these teams line up. So that just about takes care of the probable starting lineup. We'll be set for the kickoff in just a moment. This year, the bold new Pontiac is so new and different, you have to drive it to believe it. Driving has changed. It's smoother, easier, and much more comfortable. Yes, driving has changed, and Pontiac changed it. Driving has changed, and the Pontiac changed it. Driving's exciting again. Drive the bold new Pontiac and discover the highway's most advanced ideas from the industry's hottest engineering team. Performance, ride, and handling so unlike anything else on wheels, you have to drive it to believe it. Driving has changed and the Pontiac changed it. Driving's exciting again. See your Pontiac dealer, take a test ride today. Discover driving has changed when you're driving the Pontiac way. See your Pontiac dealer for a drive and a deal you'll never forget. We come back on the air here, direct from Briggs Stadium, with the roar in the background of this crowd of over 56,000 as their hometown heroes announced and described over the public address system a moment ago as the Gas House Gang. Let us tell you now of the officials for today's championship game. The referee will be Ron Gibbs of St. Thomas. The umpire will be Joe Connell of the University of Pittsburgh. The headlinesman will be Dan Keehan of Xavier. The back judge, Cleo Deal of Northwestern. And the field judge, Don Looney of TCU. Just about every probability is taken care of for a game of this importance. And so we tell you of the alternate team of officials standing by in case they are needed. The alternates are George Rennix of Minnesota, Jim Beersdorfer, who did not play in college, the veteran Charlie Barry of Lafayette, and Chuck Sweeney of Notre Dame. Those, those are the officials for today's game. This meeting between the Lions and the Browns today for this professional championship holds more than a little drama. The teams have met already once in the regular season. The Detroit Lions won by a score of 20-7. to 7. Followers of the Lions, of course, will be missing someone by the name of Bobby Lane. The great Bobby Lane suffered a fractured ankle against the Cleveland Browns earlier this season. Tobin Road has carried on nobly since that time. This will be their fourth meeting this year as they played two preseason games and divided honors. 
the Browns. And it's hard to mention the Browns and speaking of them in a negative sense. But we must report correctly that the Browns have never won at Briggs Stadium. Only a preseason game back in 1950. In championship games between these two teams... In 1952, the Detroit Lions won by a score of 17 to 7 over Cleveland. In 1953, in one of the great thrillers of professional championship history, the Lions won it in the last moments by a score of 17 to 16. And then a victory that I am sure Coach Paul Brown of the Browns marks down in his little book as one of the sweetest of his long and colorful coaching career, the 1954 championship game, when the Cleveland Browns won it by a score of 56 to 10. Now, the Browns, since 1950, have appeared in seven championship games. They have been the world champions of professional football three times. In fact, they have missed playing in only one championship game since coming to the National Football League, and that was last year. The Lions, since 1950, have appeared in four championship games. Two of them they have won. But they have also been world champions on three occasions because they were the champs way back in 1935. These teams are well scouted. In addition to the games that they have played against each other when they have scout have had, of course, their personal observations to fall back on, they have exchanged film just for the purpose of getting ready for today's game. The Browns requested to see the film of the game between the Lions and the 49ers, the playoff game, won by Detroit just a week ago, 31 to 27. The Lions, on the other hand, wanted to see the film of the game between the Browns and the New York Giants, last year's professional champions. The Browns, you see, won that one coming from behind, 34 to 28. Physically, both teams are generally speaking in good condition. We have already told you that Bobby Lane, of course, will not play. Jim David may possibly see some action. Charlie Arney has been hampered as well. On the other hand, the Cleveland Browns have been without the services of their quarterback, Tommy O'Connell. Bill McCoggan has already mentioned that. As of now, he is nominated to start at the offensive position. Filling in for him has been their great young rookie quarterback this year, Milt Plum of Penn State. Other than that, Paul Brown, I think, can pronounce his team in good condition. Right now, the referee, Ron Gibbs, and the umpire, Joe Connell, are at the 50-yard line. The co-captains of the two teams are there to shake hands, and the results of the coin toss will be made known in a moment. Right now, referee Ronald Gibbs is indicating to co-captains of the Cleveland Browns that they have won the toss. Their co-captains for Cleveland, Don Colo, defensive right tackle, and Mike McCormick, the offensive right tackle. For Detroit, middle linebacker Joe Schmidt, offensive quarterback Tobin Roach. The Browns have won the toss and have elected to defend the goal to our left, the north goal. The Detroit Lions will probably use Jim Martin to kick off. Number 47, Jim from Notre Dame, 6'2", 223. This is his eighth year in professional football, makes his home in Anaheim, California. And so from across the field, the blue jersey-clad Detroit Lions break their huddle. Jim Martin is walking to the ball. The Cleveland Browns in the uniform of the visiting team, white with dark numerals, orange helmets, are taking their position preparing for this opening kickoff. From Briggs Stadium in Detroit, the championship of professional football will be decided this very beautiful afternoon, considering that it is December, the sun is shining, the field is in pretty good condition, considering the rain of the last week. In deep receiving position to the goal line to our left, as we are high on the west side of Briggs Stadium, will be Jimmy Brown and Milt Campbell. Kicking off, Jim Martin. The roar of the crowd is now subdued. They're waiting. Jim Martin comes to the ball. His boot is high. Sail deep and far over the end line. It'll be an automatic touchback. First down and ten, the Cleveland Browns will put the ball in play from their own 20-yard line, moving left to right here in the first period. And we'll pick up their starters for you just as soon as we can. Starting at quarterback will be Tommy O'Connell. Lou Carpenter will start in place of Chet Penulak. Lou from Arkansas, brother of Preston. 
Jimmy Brown will be at the other running back position, and Ray Renfro will be an inside flanker on the right. The right end is Preston Carpenter, and the left end split is Brewster, and O'Connell fades the pass on the first play. He throws deep and out to the left, and Brewster has it at the sidelines and is bellowed out of bounds immediately after a gain of 17 yards to the 37 or possibly 38-yard line of Cleveland. A down-and-out pass penned on the first play finds Tommy O'Connell hitting Pete Brewster. He's run out of bounds by Carl Karolevitz of the Detroit Lions secondary. And so the Browns are one for one in the passing department. First and ten, the ball at the inbounds marker, far side of the field, at their own 37-yard line. Up front, Art Hunter's at center. The guards are Forrester and Jim Ray Smith, Lou Groza, Mike McCormick at the tackles. We've already told you of the end. They're both split this time. O'Connell under center. The snap, pitch, going to the left side and swinging in outside of end and bellowed out of bounds at the 43-yard line is Jimmy Brown. Carl, Carol Evitz, again in on the defensive play. The gain is beyond the 40 to the 43-yard line. Out of bounds on the far side of the field. It is a gain from the 37 to the 43 of six. Second down, four. Calling the defensive signals for the Detroit Lions is Joe Schmidt. McCord is playing at the one end position. At the other end is Gil Maines. Second down for O'Connell under center. The snap. Pitch out to the right. Right coming outside is Carpenter. He is belted and spun down at the 44 and a half yard line. Lou Carpenter. Coming up from the secondary is Yale Larry with help from Joe Schmidt, who came over from his middle linebacker position. Paul Brown will be alternating his guards as per usual, sending in instructions prior to every play. The guards alternating are Jim Ray Smith and Fred Robinson. Again on the last play of a yard and a half, it is third down and a short three yards to go. Renfro is an outside flanker and the ends are tight. O'Connell pitches to Carpenter. Trying to go outside to the left, he gets up to about the 42-yard line. He'll be very close to a first down. Jimmy Brown. Out to the left side. The ball has not been moved as it is near the out of bounds on the far side of the field because it is that close to a first down. No indication is yet from the officials that they'll have a measurement. The ball is now brought in to the inbounds marker. It is fourth down at about a half yard short of a first down. And the Browns send in their punting formation. After taking the opening kickoff, Cleveland moved to a first down on the first play of the game when quarterback Tommy O'Connell hit left end Pete Brewster on a down and out pass to the left for 17 yards. Dropping back in twin safety for Detroit, Yale Larry and Terry Barr. Now the Browns will line up first as if they're in a tee and then immediately go back to a punt formation. It'll find Kenny Kahn's punting from the Cleveland 31. The pass from center is true. The kick is a wobbly one off to the right. Barr watches it land at the 25, rolls back to the 20. He picks it up and is downed immediately at the 10-yard line. He was driven back from the 11 is where the ball will be placed as Terry Barr elected to handle that punt with three Browns standing by, led by Paul Wigan, their defensive left end. A 41-yard punt. First and 10, Detroit has the ball for the first time in this game from their own 11-yard line. We're early in the first period. There is no score. The championship of professional football at stake at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. The Lions first and ten from their own 11-yard line. The ball at the inbounds marker near side of the field. Quarterback Tobin Roth immediately splits both ends and flanks Cassidy out to the right side. The snap to Roth over left tackle. Swinging now wide to the left and being caught for a loss of one is Gene Gedman. Walt Michaels is the first man of Cleveland to hit him. It is a loss of a half yard back, let's call it the 10-yard line, a loss of one second down 11. Calling the defensive signals is Walt Michaels for Cleveland. Second down, 11. After two and a half minutes of play in the first period, there is no score. The Lions have the ball. Coming up now, their second play from scrimmage from their own 10-yard line. Split out to the left is Jim Doran. Again, it is Gedman off left tackle. He finds a big hole, comes to the 15, to the 20, and spins to the 20 and a half. John Paul in on the defensive play for Cleveland. Gene Gedman from the University of Indiana makes his home now in Detroit, Michigan, native of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Shy of a first down by a half yard, the ball is placed right on the 20-yard line, inbounds marker near side of the field. It is third down and less than a yard for Detroit. The Browns have the only first down of the game. We're forced to punt. Detroit now has it on third down. Doran again splits left. Cassidy is an outside flanker to the right side. 
Gedman over left guard, spins away from one tackler. He may or may not have the first down. It's that close. Walt Michaels came booming in there to bring him down. And so players now, along with officials, surround the ball. We will now have an official timeout for a measurement. The chains come in from the near side of the field. First down by inches at the 21-yard line. So the gain was just a half yard, but enough for Detroit. So even up the first down department, they have their first one. Tobin wrote at quarterback. Gedman, John Henry Johnson at the running backs. Cassidy this time comes out of the huddle and flanks to the right side. The right end is Steve Junker. He split about a yard. Doran split left about ten yards. The snap. John Henry Johnson over right guard to the 25 to the 30. Swings to the left. 35. 40-yard line. John Henry Johnson. Broke over a big hole on the right side of the Browns line. Swung out to the left. He's finally brought down by Don Paul of the secondary and Galen Fitz, the linebacker. John Henry Johnson carries for a Cleveland first down, just shy of the Lions 40 by a half yard. And again, it's Walt Michaels setting up the defense for Cleveland. A 19-yard run for John Henry Johnson. Again, Cassidy will be a flanker to the right. Junker and Doran are split at ends a couple of yards. The snap and rope fades to pass. He looks, he throws over the middle, and it is complete at the Brown 40-yard line to right end Steve Junker, who cut across the middle and made a tremendous catch right in front of Kenny Collins, who made the tackle. So Rote is one for one in the passing department, and the Lions are in Cleveland Brown territory at the 40-yard line. First down and 10, Detroit. There is no score. After five minutes of play in the first period, this is the first time that either team has been able to penetrate beyond the 50. The Lions, first down and 10 at Cleveland's 40-yard line. Jim Doran splits to the right. Cassidy will flank outside Steve Junker now, who is lined up at left end. The ends have switched. Open road under center. A four-man Cleveland line, three linebackers tight, and coming to the outside is Gedman. He gets away from one man, but he's caught after a short gain of one. Swinging outside his own left tackle, running laterally. He's pinned down by Don Paul, who plays the right corner, along with Vince Costello and Junior Wren. A gain just across the 40 to the 39-yard line. A gain of one. Second down, nine. The interior offensive lineman for Detroit, Lou Treekmer of William & Mary at left tackle. Kenny Russell is at right tackle. The guards are Hardy Sewell and Stan Campbell. And Stephen Brown is at center. Cassidy flanks outside the right end, Steve Junker. Jim Doran is foot left. Rope fates the pass on second down nine. He hits his man at the 26-yard line door, and he falls forward to the 25 as he tackles. Don Paul makes the tackle. As the left end, Jim Doran made a move as if to go deep, but he stopped, button hook, took the strike, and it's a first down for Detroit at the 26-yard line as the ball is placed down at the inbounds marker. The defender that time slipped as he came to make the defensive play. The field is in, as we told you prior to the start of the game, excellent condition considering the weather, but it has its slippery spots. Cassidy is a flanker way outside to the right this time, and only the left end, Doran, is split. First and ten at the 26-yard line of Cleveland. Detroit's Tobin Road under center. No score in the game, first quarter. A fake to Johnson, and Gedman on a trap play over the right side. Comes up to the 22-yard line, and there he's thrown back very hard by four Cleveland Brown players led by Vince Costello and Galen Fisk, two of the linebackers. The fake that time went to the first man through, John Henry Johnson. The handoff went actually to Gene Gedman. The forward progress is marked at 23-yard line, so it is a gain of three. Second down, seven. Detroit in possession at the Cleveland Brown 23-yard line. Unofficially, seven minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. There is no score. Up along, Cassidy flanks outside to the right and again. Tobin Rote has his right end tight, and Jim Doran split left about eight yards, and Rote fades to pass on second down seven. He throws deep for Cassidy. He's in the end zone. It is incomplete. Warren Lahr went down with Cassidy, who, as he crossed the goal line, had about two steps on Lahr, but the ball thrown high as Cassidy was in the deep right corner of the end zone enabled Lahr to get down and break it up as both he and Cassidy went up for it. The pass is incomplete. It is now third down and seven. Getman leads the game. He is replaced by Dave Middleton. Dave from Auburn. 
is going to line up as a flanker to the right side. The right end junker is tight. Doran is split left. And Roke fates the pass on third down. He looks. He throws. It is incomplete for the flare man. Out to the right side, covered by Lar, John Henry Johnson. Middleton went fairly deep and was covered beautifully. The swing pass was thrown to the fullback, John Henry Johnson. It was incomplete. And so now with fourth down at about seven, into the game comes Jim Martin. He will apparently attempt the field goal. The attempt with Tobin Road holding will come from the Cleveland 31-yard line. Midway in the first quarter, there is no score. The Lions right now are going to try and score. The snap, the kick. It is good. The score, the Detroit Lions three, the Cleveland Browns nothing. you an automobile, the way to find the answer to that question is to go take a look at the bold U58 Pontiac. Because in Pontiac, you're going to find everything is new. You see, Pontiac started right from the very beginning with the all-new aero frame. That's the chassis that gives Pontiac new length, brings the height down four inches while giving you more headroom than ever. And this aero frame design brings with it many new and exciting features. Pontiac Circles of Steel safety body, for instance, that surrounds you with rugged girder steel from every angle. Ever-level air ride, the new Pontiac ride that floats you along on air and keeps your car always level no matter how you load it. Pontiac's new direction styling that is fresh and new because it's based on new inner construction. And position performance delivered by the all-new Tempest 395 engine. See all these new features. See and drive the bold new Pontiac this week. Pontiac, America's number one road car. And now back to Ray Scott. Right, Joe McCoggan, Jim Martin preparing to kick off for Detroit as the Lions score first and lead three to nothing at the midway point of the first period. The whistle with Campbell and Brown deep to receive. Jimmy Brown in the end zone, takes it five yards deep and decides to run it out. He comes up the left side to the five, to the ten, and he's fun under at the seventeen. Making the tackle, along with Jim Martin, who kicked off, Gary Lowe, who is in there on the kickoff team for Detroit. He is a defensive back. So the Browns have the ball, first down and ten at their own 17-yard line. The white-clad Cleveland Browns moving left to right here in this first period, trailing by a score of three to nothing. The ball at the inbounds marker, far side of the field. Again under center, it'll be Tommy O'Connell. Ray Renfro will flank to the right. The ends are in tight. In the running back spots are Carpenter, Lou Carpenter, and Jimmy Brown. O'Connell fades the pass. Excellent protection. Goes out to the left side. Renfro has it at the 27-yard line. He's brought down immediately. Making the tackle, Yale Larry. Whistle on the field. We're going to have an official timeout. It is not a team timeout. That play started at the 17, and it's very close to a first down. It is short by about a foot. Second down and just inches. Bill, if I may, you've watched the Browns all season long. On a second down and inches to go. Have they shown the inclination to go for the works at a spot like this? Yes, uh, Ray Scott, there have been times when they have gone for the distance when it appears that uh, it might be just a straight buck up the middle. But right now, let's see what uh, head coach Paul Brown has sent in. He again has made his change at a guard position with instructions on second down and a foot to go at the Browns' 27-yard line. O'Connell under center. Five-man Detroit line. The snap. Straight ahead goes Jimmy Brown. Across the 30, he has the first down with a couple of yards to spare. The Detroit Lions, in chalking up their field goal, making the march deep into Cleveland territory, chalked up four first downs as that drive started from the 10. Joe Schmidt and Gil Maines in on the stop for Detroit on this last play as Jimmy Brown picks up the first down at the Cleveland Brown 30-yard line. Jimmy Brown, who pulled down the rushing crown in the National Football League this year. First-year man from Syracuse, he has been tremendous. This time, O'Connell is going to split both his ends, and Renfro is an inside flanker on the right side, and the running backs are wide apart as O'Connell fades the pass. He looks once, he throws, it is intercepted by Bob Long. He's at the 30, the Browns 25, he's at the 20-yard line. The roar 
tells you how this highly partisan Detroit Lion crowd felt about that interception by left linebacker Bob Long from UCLA. And the ball is spotted at the 19-yard line of Cleveland. Inbounds marker near side of the field, and the Lions, moving right to left, have a tremendous break. Dave Middleton is a flanker to the right. Steve Junker, the right end, has split a couple of yards. To the left is Jim Doran. The snap. Off to the right side is Cassidy to the 18. Roach faded as if to pass. His running back on the left side, Howard Hopalong Cassidy. Delayed just a count or two and then slammed off the right side and picked up a yard where Bill Quinlan, the defensive left end of Cleveland, made the stop. A gain of one, second down nine. And the teams right now are in the portion of the field that is covered by sunshine. Temperature of about 32 degrees here in Detroit. The Lions leading 3 nothing. Both ends split this time and Middleton flanks outside to the left. Rote fades the pass. Now he runs up the middle. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. The 5. The 3. The 1 yard line. He's right down within a foot or so of that goal line. Hogan Rote went busting up that middle. Hogan Rote has been throughout his great career in the National Football League with the Packers and this year with the Detroit Lions, one of the great running quarterbacks. He's averaged five yards a carry. He brings his team to first down and goal to go on the one. Dave Middleton is the flanker to the right. The rest of the line is tight and Roach seeks into the end zone for the touchdown. comes into the game, he will attempt the extra point as the Lions now lead with four minutes of play unofficially remaining in the first period, nine to nothing. Rote will hold. The snap, the ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. The point is good and the score now. The Detroit Lions 10, the Cleveland Browns nothing. If you're thinking of buying one of the so-called low-priced street cars, then listen to this. The bold new Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of them on all counts and does it for less money. Take size, for example. Pontiac gives you a big road leveling, 122-inch wheelbase. And that's where comfort and man size room begins. And it takes the smaller cars hands down on response with dual action Tempest 395 performance. Pontiac is more advanced, too, bringing to the low price field scores of new ideas from the industry's hottest engineering team. Such bold advances as aero frame stability, quadrupoise ride, and circles of steel safety body. As for luxury, Pontiac gives you color-matched interiors and wall-to-wall carpeting at no extra cost. In short, Pontiac is far and away more car for less money. So before you buy a car with a low-priced name, check in with your Pontiac dealer and action test the bold new Chieftain. You'll get a drive and a deal you'll never forget. All set for the kickoff and once again back to Ray Scott. Jim Martin preparing to come up to the ball with again Jimmy Brown and Bill Campbell back to receive at the goal line. Martin comes to the ball. His kick is high and swings off to the right. Campbell comes up to it at the three-yard line to the 10, to the left, 15, to the 20, to the 23-yard line. A fumble. The ball is loose. It is rolling back toward the goal line. It is recovered at the 15-yard line by Detroit. the defensive secondary in on the kickoff team of Detroit for recovering that fumble at the Cleveland Brown 15-yard line as Milt Campbell fumbles. And Detroit has their second break in just a couple of moments. Coburn Road under center, Middleton flanking to the left, and Rote fades to pass. He looks, he throws, incomplete at the one. As Middleton took a step as if to go inside, and the pass was thrown as if he intended to head to the sideline. It is incomplete, second down 10. As Rode at this point, with the brakes heavily favoring the Lions at this point in the first period, has decided to go immediately for the long gainer. Second down 10, Detroit at the Cleveland 15-yard line. Unofficially, three and a half minutes remaining first quarter. The Lions are leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Jim Doran splits to the left this time, and Middleton is outside the right end as a flanker. 
The snap. Short game over left guard by Hopalong Cassidy. Walt Michaels made the stop. A change coming in now for the Detroit Lions. Gene Gedman is coming in. Cassidy started this game in the offensive unit for Detroit as the flanker back. Just preceding the last touchdown, the first touchdown of the game, he came in at a running back position. He is now leaving the game in favor of Gene Gedman, who comes back in. Third down, nine yards to go. The ball at the 14-yard line. Rote fades the pass. Looks right, looks left. Over the middle, it is complete to the five, to Junker, to the two, to the one. And he's swarmed under it about the two-yard line. Right over the middle, Steve Junker got loose. It is a first down and goal to go at the one-and-a-half-yard line of Cleveland. As Roach, at the last instant, as he was about to be hit, spotted Junker over the middle loose. He hit him with a beauty. First down and goal to go, Detroit at the one-and-a-half-yard line. Late first quarter, a little better than two minutes remaining. The official time in the National Football League is kept by the umpire. The clock that we refer to is unofficial. Middleton flanks way out to the right, and both ends are tight for Detroit. Straight ahead goes Gedman. Close to the goal line. The headlinesman will mark his forward progress very closely. The headlinesman immediately puts his hand on his head to indicate there's an official time. Dan Peehan, the headlinesman of today's game. Players on pile. Ball is put down. It's a foot short. It is a foot short. Public address announcer says the half-yard line. We won't quibble. It's close. Goal to go. Middleton flanks to the right. Roach sneaks over guard. Is he in there? No signal from the officials. He evidently has not made it. Hoven Roach trying to sneak over left guard. It is now just inches short as the players unpile and the ball is spotted. It is now third down and goal to go. The Lions scoring first on a field goal. Then they intercepted a pass and set up the first touchdown of the game. Jim Martin kicked the extra point and they led 10 to nothing. A fumble on the ensuing kickoff. The Lions recovered and they're now third and goal to go on the six-inch line. Road under center again, a mass defensive line. Straight ahead goes Gedman. He is in there. Gedman scores the second touchdown of the game for the Detroit Lions. And this team that has been a second-half team and unable to score in the last few games at least very often in the first half is suddenly on top of a 16-0 lead. Road holding, Martin tempting the conversion. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is in the air. It is good. And so now the Detroit Lions lead the Cleveland Browns by a score of 17 to nothing. Friends, this reminder, so that we may bring you this special broadcast, the Catholic Hour, heard over most of these stations at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, will be heard tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over many of these same stations. That's 10.30 Eastern Time tonight only for the Catholic Hour. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WGY, WGFM, connected. There is a change now for the Cleveland Browns in the deep positions preparing for the kickoff. Milt Campbell was shaken up on that last kickoff and has now been replaced at a deep spot by Billy Reynolds, who teams now with Jimmy Brown. As Jim Martin prepares to kick off, with a little better than a minute remaining in the first period, and the Lions leading by a score of 17 to nothing. Martin comes to the ball. His boot is down the middle, and Reynolds at the four. Slips to one knee, gets up, comes to the 10, 15, 20, 22, and there he's hit by a very hard tackle by John Gordy, rookie guard from Tennessee, in on the kickoff unit for Detroit. First down and 10 to Cleveland at their own 22-yard line, between the 21 and 22. Tommy O'Connell will be the Cleveland Brown quarterback. Tommy, from the University of Illinois, has had a tremendous year for Cleveland. He has an inside flanker on the right. 
Ray Renfro. The ends are split. Brown and Carpenter at the running back positions and fading the pass is O'Connell. He looks to the left and he throws deep intended for Brewster. It is complete and going out of bounds at the 42-yard line as wrestling him out is Carl Karolevitz of the Detroit secondary. Pete Brewster takes the down and out pass from Tommy O'Connell. Seconds remaining in the first period. First down for Cleveland at their own 41-and-a-half-yard line. The guards exchanging for Cleveland today with instructions from Paul Brown are Jim Ray Smith and Fred Robinson. Fred from the University of Washington. Jim Ray Smith from Baylor. Renfro is flanking outside the right end who is tight this time as O'Connell gives to Carpenter. Takes to Carpenter and off to the left side goes Renfro with blockers in front of him to the 50, 45, 40 into Detroit territory at the 37-yard line. A beautiful fake that time. It looked as if Lou Carpenter was swinging out to the right. But Ray Renfro, from his flanking position on the right, circled wide to the left and crossed into Detroit territory and is finally brought down at the 38-yard line by Yale Larry. First down and 10, Cleveland now. At the 38-yard line of Detroit, Ray Renfro breaks out of the huddle and flanks to the right side. Pete Brewster is split left. The right end, Preston Carpenter, is in tight. O'Connell the snap. Swinging out to the left this time is Carpenter. He cuts back sharply, brought down from behind at the 35-yard line by Bob Long, who circled the play, and Terry Barr, who came up from the secondary, along with Gil Maines, the defensive right end. Preston Carpenter is the right end of the Cleveland Browns in their offensive unit, and in a running back position, Lou Carpenter. They are brothers, both from the University of Arkansas. Again on the play to the 34-yard line of four, and it's second down six for Cleveland. There is the gun. That's the end of the first quarter and the score. The Detroit Lions, 17. The Cleveland Browns, nothing. When you're at a football game, it's nice to know all the signs that the officials use. But if you're in the market for used car, there's one sign that you should know. The Goodwill used car sign. You'll find it at your Pontiac dealers, and it tells you he has the best used cars in town. Because before a car can be a Goodwill used car, it is carefully reconditioned by Pontiac trained expert mechanics. And when it does earn that Goodwill sticker, it's guaranteed by your respected and responsible Pontiac dealers. So see him soon and look over his Goodwill used cars. As we prepare for the start of the second quarter of this championship football game of the National Football League from Briggs Stadium in Detroit, it is now my pleasure to call in the young man whom you heard prior to the start of the game, who will be calling the plays for you here in the second quarter, who has followed the Cleveland Browns all year long as their play-by-play broadcaster on radio. So from Cleveland, Ohio, here is Bill McCoggin. Bill? Thank you very much, Ray Scott. All set for the second period, and the Lions certainly are off to a flying start in this one as they took advantage of two breaks. One, a fumble by Mel Campbell in which Terry Barr picked up the football. The other, a pass interception by Bob Long. And quickly, they turned it into 14 points. The other three, of course, came on a field goal by Jim Martin, who originally is from Cleveland, Ohio. Right now, the Browns have the ball just inside the Detroit Lions 35-yard line. As here in the second period, the Browns will be moving from the south to the north. They'll be moving from our right to our left. The referee, Ron Gibbs, signals that time is back in. Browns breaking out of the huddle. Second down, seven yards to go. The Cleveland backfield, O'Connell at quarter. Renfro the flanking back. Lou Carpenter the running half. The fullback is Jimmy Brown. A long count. There's a flag. Big number uh, 70, Ray Krause, came around and belted Tommy O'Connell from behind. There's going to be a five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty against the Detroit Lions for offside. It was Ray Kraus and O'Connell has a word with the referee, Ron Gibbs. So the Lions are penalized for the 30-yard line. It's second down now and just about two and a half yards to go. And into the lineup at right guard comes Jim Ray Smith replacing Fred Robinson. The ball spotted just inside the 30-yard line in Detroit territory. The Lions leading by a score of 17 to nothing as we get underway with the second period. The Browns up to the line of scrimmage. Pete Bruce to the left end is split. The flanker, Ray Renfro, is out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He's at the 30, down to the 25. He's to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in for touchdown. Jimmy Brown leaves Detroit tacklers scattered all over the field. Carl Karolevich had a shot at him at the 15. Also, number 24, Jack Christensen. But Brown, the former All-American from Syracuse University, who led the National Football League in ground gaining this year, just ran over them, and the Browns now have their first touchdown. 
Jimmy Brown going 30 yards for a touchdown, and the score is now 17 to 6. And of course, it'll be Lou the Togrosa who will try to pick up the extra point. Tony O'Connell holding. There's the snap back from center. It's spotted, it's booted, it's good. And it's now a 17 to 7 football game. The Detroit Lions over the Cleveland Browns, 17 to 7, as the Browns quickly score in the second period of play, using just about nine seconds to do so. So now Luke Groza will get set to kick off for the first time this afternoon. Groza, the only remaining member of the Browns, which started back in 1946. Lou, one of the real great stars of pro football, setting the ball up in the 40-yard line. Tom Tracy, number 30 on the far side in the receiving position for the Detroit Lions. Yale Larry is on the near side. Both stand down at the goal line. Groza has the football from the referee, Ron Gibbs. Tracy, of course, the spark plug in last week's victory for the Lions over the San Francisco 49ers at Kizar Stadium. It was his 58-yard run which started them on the road to victory. Groza gets the whistle, moves up on the football. It's a low kick going down to about the four-yard line. It's taken by Larrys to the 10, the 15, to the 20, moves to his left at the 25, and goes down as he gets to about the 29 or the 30. Gail Larry, the former Texas A&M star from Fort Worth, Texas, took the kick on the Lion four-yard line, and he returned it all the way to the 30 before he was tackled by Bobby Freeman, number 18. So the Lions now have a first and 10 on their own 30-yard line. Line backfield, Tobin Rudd at quarterback. Howard Cassidy, John Henry Johnson in there. Middleton also in there. Cassidy is the running back. Middleton is the flanker. Middleton is out to the right. The left hand, Jim Doran, splits way out. Tobin Rudd looks over that way. Rudd calls the signals. Fakes. Now he hands off to Henry Johnson, and he gets to just about the line of scrimmage. Tobin Rudd, the quarterback, first takes the flip to Howard Hopalong Cassidy, then hand it to his fullback, John Henry Johnson. Johnson piled up as he got to just about the line of scrimmage. Galen Fiss and Vince Costello teaming up on the play for the Browns. Vince Costello, their middle linebacker. Galen Fiss, the linebacker on the left side. So the ball is still on the 30-yard line. It's second down for Detroit. Ten yards to go at that spot. Middleton this time moves out to the left. Don Paul over that a cover him. The right end is Jim Doran. The left end this time is Junker. Tobin Road calls. This time again he fakes the flip and hands off to John Henry Johnson. And Johnson gets just about a yard. He was hit by Waller Michaels, number 34. Again, the fake flip to Cassidy as Cassidy moved out to the left. And then the handoff to Johnson, sending him right into the middle of the line. But there he was met by the Browns veteran linebacker, Waller Michaels, who played his collegiate football at Washington and Lee. Incidentally, Michaels is the older brother of Kentucky's All-American Lou Michaels, who will be in the National Football League next year. This time it's Middleton moving out to the left. The right end, Jim Doran, split by about 10 yards. Galen Fist over there to cover him. Tobin Root calls the signals, looks for a receiver. He throws. It is no good. Over the head of the intended receiver, Dave Middleton, upfield, almost at the 50-yard line, covered by Don Paul on the play. Tobin Root has attempted seven passes this afternoon. He has completed three of them for 44 yards. That time he tried to hit Middleton on the far side of the field, near the sideline. Yale Larry can turn the football game now to do the punting for the Detroit Lions. Back in the double safety for the Browns, standing inside the 30-yard line. Chet Hanulak on the near side, Billy Reynolds on the far side. Very few of Larry's punts have been returned this year. He kicks them high and he kicks them far. He was rushed. The kick goes to Billy Reynolds at the 34. He's to the 35, but he is down. That's back at the 34. Darn Devil was downfield. John Dibble made the tackle. The rush was put on uh, Yale Larry by Jim Ray Smith. The kick went to about the 34, and that's exactly where Reynolds ended up, a 46-yard punt. And the Browns have it, first and 10 on their own 34-yard line. They huddle back inside the 25-yard line. Score of the game, the Lions 17, the Browns 7 in the second period. Renfro, the inside flanker of the left. Brewster, the left end, is put out by about 15 yards. The handoff goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown, going straight ahead. He gets just a couple of yards, moving across the 35-yard line. Hit by Ray Krause and Joe Schmidt. Krause, 275 pounds. Joe Schmidt, 222 pounds. The Lions' great linebacker. The ball is spotted just over the 35. We'll call it the 35. Give Brown a gain of a yard on the play. 
And it'll be second down and nine yards to go. Cleveland now to the huddle. Preston Carpenter, the right end, splits out. Brewster does the same on the left side. And Renfro is the inside flanker to the right. O'Connell at quarterback calls the signals. The line's up there in a five-man line. The blitz is on. O'Connell back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Well, they had the rush on him that time. It was intended for Pete Brewster at about the 45-yard line in Detroit territory, but it was far short. Blitzing was Bob Long, the left linebacker, and also Joe Schmidt, the middle linebacker. So on the incompleted forward pass, it is now third down coming up and nine yards to go. Third down and nine yards to go. O'Connell intended for Pete Brewster along the near sideline, but the Lions had a rush on, and Tommy was hurried in getting the ball away, and it fell far short of the target. Preston Carpenter, the right end splits out. Brewster does the same on the left side, and Renfro is the inside flanker to the left. O'Connell calls the signal. He takes. On the handoff, it goes to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He comes forward to the 40-yard line, but of course it's going to be far short of the first down. Jimmy Brown, the fullback, taking the handoff from Tommy O'Connell, going straight ahead. He got to the 40-yard line before he was hit by Joe Schmidt and Darius McCord. McCord, the defensive left end for the Detroit Lions, and Schmidt, as we have mentioned several times, the middle linebacker. So now it's Yale Larry and Terry Barr going back into the level safety. Kenny Cones, the former Louisiana State star, will do the kicking for the Browns. They come out, now shift into punt formation. Cones moves back to about his 25-yard line. Barr and Larry upfield at the Detroit 20. Barr on the far side. Larry on the near side. There's the snapback. There's the kick. It's a good high kick going inside the 20-yard line. It's taken down there by Yale Larry. He runs to his right. He gets away from one man. He gets away from another. Cuts back in and is dropped at the 50-yard line. He was slowed down by Preston Carpenter and then tackled by Vince Costello. There's a marker on the play at the 30-yard line. So let's see what it's going to be. 42-yard punt for Kenny Combs. Vince Costello made the tackle. The kick went to about the 19-yard line. And Larry brought it back from there to the 25. But let's see now what the call is going to be. It's a holding penalty. And it's going to be against the Detroit Lions. So the Browns get a break. As Detroit is penalized, it moves the ball from the 25-yard line, the spot to which Larry had returned, back inside the 15 to the 13. So the Lions have it in their own territory at the 13-yard line. The Lions lead by a score of 17 to 7. That penalty a half the distance to the goal line penalty. Jim Doran splits way out to the right. Middleton is out to the left. Tobin Road calls the signals. He takes. He gives to Cassidy. Cassidy comes forward to about the 15-yard line. Warren Law, Galen Fisk in there to hit him along with Bob Gain. Bob Gain leading the charge. Law and Fisk then coming up to help out. So Cassidy gets from the 13 to the 16-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third down. Or second down, I should say, in about seven. Second and about seven. And now the Detroit Lions are preparing to call a timeout. With the Lions taking timeout, the score is Detroit 17 and Cleveland 7. If you feel your car budget calls for sticking to the low price three, I've got some news for you. Take a look at the bold new Pontiac Chieftain, the low-priced member of the Pontiac family. And when you do, you'll find the Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low-priced three on every count and does it for less money. That's right. The Pontiac Chieftain is priced down below many of the smaller cars and yet beats them from every angle. Size, the Chieftain gives you a man-sized 122-inch wheelbase with roomy stretch-out interiors. Performance, Pontiac's Tempest 395 engine beats the best they have to offer with jeweled action performance. Comfort, the Pontiac Chieftain gives you big car roominess, big car styling, and scores of extras at no extra cost. For example, Pontiac gives you a choice of twice as many color combinations, wall-to-wall carpeting, and even the lowest price models, oversized tires, safety plate glass all around, crank-operated penny panes, and many, many more as standard equipment. Stop in at your dealers and see the Pontiac Chieftain. It beats the best of the low price three for less money. See it this week. Ten and a half minutes remaining to be played in the first half of this football game with the Detroit Lions in front by a score of 17 to 7. And in case you joined us late, the Lions picked up all 17 points in the first period. Three of them coming on a field goal by Jim Martin to give them a 3-0 lead. And then... They intercepted a pass with Bob Long, who intercepted it to set up a touchdown, and then a fumble by Mill Campbell set up another Detroit score. The Browns scored early in this period on a 30-yard run by their great fullback, rookie Jimmy Brown. 
The Lions have it. Second down, about seven yards to go. The ball resting just over the 15-yard line at the 16. Doran is out to the right. Middleton out to the left. The left-hand junker split by about five yards. Road is going back to pass. He throws. It's good to Doran at the 25-yard line. Wrestled out of bounds by Kenny Kahn. But it's going to be enough for the first down. Tobin Roach, the Lions' fine quarterback, connecting with Jim Doran, the veteran end, moving from the 16-yard line across the 25. We'll call it the 26-yard line. And it's the Lions' first down and 10 yards to go. The line backfield has Tobin Rowe throwing them. Middleton, the flanking halfback. Howard Cassidy, the running half, and John Henry Johnson is the fullback. During the right end again, a split. Wrote this time to John Henry Johnson on the draw, and he comes forward to about the 28-yard line, getting a couple of yards on the play. It looked for a moment as though the Browns' defense had fallen for it, and the Johnson might go for distance. He does get to the 28-yard line. Bob Gain and Bill Quinlan combining for the Browns to make the tackle. So it's a gain of two for John Henry Johnson, the former San Francisco 49er fullback. And it's second down and eight yards to go for the Detroit Lions. The ball resting on the Lions 28. Middleton is out to the right this time. The right end junker is split, and Duran is the left end. Here it goes to Johnson. He's at the 30, the 35. He's at the 40. Cuts to his left. He's at the 45-yard line. Is hit. He's still on his feet, and now he's dropped at the 47. Don Solo upfield. Vince Costello also upfield to make the tackle. Another fine run by John Henry Johnson with Waller Michaels who finally grabbed him. He was hit a couple of times but still kept going. And the Lions have another first down at their own 47-yard line. The Detroit Lions leading by a score of 17-7 to in the second period with a little better than nine minutes remaining to be played. And now it's all time out on the playing field, and Tom Tracy has come into the football game at fullback. John Henry Johnson has gone out. With time out on the playing field, let's call on Ray Scott. Ray? Okay, Bill. Gee, I just uh, sitting here the last couple of minutes, Bill, and reveling and watching these two teams, because you can see that both of these teams are keyed very high despite the fact that the Lions got off to that 17 to nothing lead. You could sense it was just a matter of time until the Browns came back. And, of course, come back they did, largely on that great run by their fullback, Jimmy Brown. I think it's interesting to point out statistics are usually a very dull thing, but you can't ignore statistics like those that belong to Jimmy Brown in leading the league in rushing and setting, in fact, a league record of one game when he played against the Los Angeles Rams back on November 24th and carried the ball 31 times for 237 yards. An amazing record for a veteran, let alone a rookie like Jimmy Brown in this National Football League. By the way, friends, we'd like you to remember that the bold new Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price three and for less money. So see it at your dealers this week. Well, Bill, this... Uh Largely a partisan crowd in favor of the Detroit Lions has had a lot to cheer about this afternoon. But I do believe that uh, the folks here in Detroit, as in the rest of the National Football League cities, have over a period of time grown to appreciate good football, whether it's by the home team or, in this case, by the visiting Cleveland Browns. I think they appreciate good football, and I think uh, we both agree it's been just that so far and more to come. That's for sure. It's been good football in the National Football League all season long, and we should see another honey here this afternoon. The Lions to the line of scrimmage. First and ten. Middleton is out to the right this time. Junker to the right end is split by just two or three yards. The handoff goes to Cassidy. He's wide to his left. He's out of the round 45, inside the 45 to about the 42. Tobin Rowe faking to the fullback, Tracy, and giving to Howard Hopalong Cassidy, the former Ohio State All-American. Cassidy swinging wide to the left, bounced out of bounds by Junior Wren and Don Paul, but not until he had reached the Browns' 41-yard line. So it's another first down for Detroit. Cassidy getting around the corner and turning on the speed. This time it's Middleton, the former Auburn star, going to a flanking spot out to the right. The left end door in a split. Rose goes back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is no good. Almost intercepted by Galen Fiss. Down at the 31-yard line. The intended receiver was Hopalong Cassidy. Bill Quinlan, the defensive left end, finally broke through the Lion protection and did get a shot at Rose just as he was throwing the ball. So on the incompleted forward, it is now second down for Detroit. Ten yards to go. The ball on the Cleveland 41. The Lions leading the Browns by a score of 17 to 7. 
with nine minutes left to play in the first half of this game. Dave Middleton takes his flanking spot to the right. Tim Doran is the left end, and he's split way out. Junker split by about five. Rope throws the quick one. Tracy has it at the 30. He's out of the 25. Tackled by Waller Michaels. That time, Tobin Rote sent about four receivers downfield. Tracy has been injured on the play. He was hit hard by Waller Michaels. A 16-yard pass play from Tobin Rote to Tom Tracy, who hails from nearby... Pontiac, Michigan. Trace played his college football at Tennessee. He now leaves the football game. Shaken up on the play. And it's first and ten for the Detroit Lions on the 25-yard line. Here's to be his right knee. Middleton out to the right. Both ends are split. Rode calls the signals. Again, he goes back to throw. And again, he gets protection. He throws a long one. And it is just broken up. Intended for Jim Doran down in the end zone. And Junior Wren just did get his finger tipped on it. As Doran was waiting with outstretched arms. Tobin Rode on first and ten, going for the long one. As he tried to find Doran open in the end zone, Doran was almost open. But at the last moment, Junior Wren, the former Missouri star, got his fingertips on it to break it up. So it's second and ten for Detroit. John Henry Johnson back in the line backfield at fullback. Middleton comes out to the right. Doran flanks from his left end position. Rote going back on the draw. He gives to John Henry Johnson. He gets to just about the line of scrimmage. John Colo and Bob Gain there to grab him. And now the tempers flare just a bit. Also in on the play was Big Lenny Ford. Actually, Johnson was stopped for a loss of about a half a yard. We'll call it second, uh, third down and 11 yards to go. Gene Gedman in the ball game in place of Howard Cassidy. The ball resting on the Browns' 26-yard line. The Lions leading by 10 points, 17-7. to 7. The Lions to the line of scrimmage. Doran out to the right. Middle in the inside flank of the right. Rote back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is no good. Middleton, the intended receiver, was being covered by Kenny Collins with linebacker Galen Fiss also trailing him downfield. Middleton made a diving try for it inside the 15-yard line, but it was incomplete. And it's now fourth down coming up. And 11 yards to go, and we may have Jim Martin trying another field goal. He booted one early in the first period to give the Lions a 3 nothing lead at the time. Detroit moving out of the huddle, and it's going to be a field goal try. Tobin Rope will hold, and Jim Martin will try. If it's good, it'll be from the 33-yard line. It's a fake. Rode is running with the ball. He throws a pass, and it's going to be for touchdown. Executed a fake field goal. Tillman Rope was holding. Instead, he picked it up, rolled to his right, saw Junker down there all alone, and it went for the touchdown. Jim Martin not trying for the extra point. The ball is spotted. It's booted. It's good. And the Detroit Lions now lead by a score of 24 to 7. Well, Ray Scott, you've seen the Lions play several times this year. Have you seen them work that before? No, Bill McCoggan, I haven't seen them work that, but I'll tell you what I did see them do early this season and what I still believe is one of the key plays for the Lions. As you know, they lost their opener, and they were playing the Green Bay Packers, Bill, and ladies and gentlemen, up in Green Bay. It was a tight ball game, and it was early in the ball game. Yale Larry came in to punt with long yardage on fourth down. He took the pass from center, but instead of punting, he ran from a deep punt formation. He ran for a first down. It kept the drive going. They went on to score. And I firmly believe that that was one, not only one of the key plays of that game, but enabled the Lions to win that important first game that they had to win. And, of course, the rest of it is history as they went on to come into this championship game. So they have been full of surprises. And I'm certain there are more to come, Bill. And as a result of that surprise, they lead the Browns by a score of 24 to 7. Jim Martin getting set to kick off for the Detroit Lions. Billy Reynolds. And Jimmy Brown, the deep man for Cleveland. Reynolds on the far side. Brown on the near side. That was a 26-yard scoring pass. Wrote to Junker. There's the kick. It's a good high one. Reynolds goes way back and goes out of the end zone. So it'll be a touchback, and the Browns will take over first and ten on their own 20-yard line. 
Jim Martin really booting them today. That's the second one that has carried all the way out of the end zone. And several others have gone down to the end zone. Well, the crowd of more than 56,000 here at Briggs Stadium still talking about that fake field goal and the touchdown pass from Tobin Road to the rookie end, Steve Junker. The Browns move out of the huddle. Renfro is the flanker out to the left. Tommy O'Connell at quarterback calling the signals. He takes. He's going back to pass. He throws. It's good to Brewster at the 35-yard line. Tackled immediately and pushed out of bounds. Tommy O'Connell finding the lanky left end. Pete Brewster in the open at the 35. Bounced out of bounds immediately by Jack Christensen. But it goes as a first down for the Browns. Moving the ball from the 20 to the 35-yard line. Brewster, 6'4", 210 pounds, in his sixth year in the National Football League. He played his college football at Purdue University. First and ten as the Browns move to the line of scrimmage. Renfro out to the right. Brewster with the left end is split. The line's in the five-band line. The handoff goes to Luke Carpenter. He gets the block from Robinson, but he's nailed and back to the line of scrimmage. It was Joe Schmidt. The Lions' defensive captain and their fine linebacker, along with Yale Larry. Actually, it was Schmidt who made the tackle, and Larry then came up to make sure that Carpenter wasn't going to go anywhere. So Lou Carpenter, the former Detroit Lion, playing in his first year with Cleveland, loses a couple of yards from the 35 to the 33, and it'll be second down and 12 yards to go. Cleveland coming out of the huddle. Jim David in the defensive backfield for Detroit now. The Lions up there in a six-man line. Joe Schmidt, the middle guard, just about another yard and back. O'Connell back to pass. He throws. Almost intercepted by Bob Long. Intended for Preston Carpenter at the 45-yard line. O'Connell's forward pass. Almost picked off by Bob Long, the linebacker from UCLA. It'll be third down now. 12 yards to go. Long was the boy who intercepted the O'Connell pass in the first period to set up the Lions' first touchdown. So now it's third down for Cleveland. 12 yards to go, the ball resting on the Browns' 33-yard line. They trail by a score of 24-7 to in the first half of play with about six minutes remaining in this half. O'Connell calls the signals. The ends are split. The inside flanker is to the right. O'Connell going back to pass or a flag thrown. It's a screen pass to Jimmy Brown. He gets away from Roger Zatkoff. He's at the 30. He's at the 35, and down he goes at the 36-yard line. The Lions were offside on the play. Tommy O'Connell on the screen pass to Jimmy Brown. The tackle made by Terry Barr. Actually, there was a gain of just a couple of yards on the play. As the uh, line of scrimmage prior to the play was the 33. Brown got to the 35. They're now talking. The officials are talking. Where the Browns captain, Mike McCormick, number 74. A fine offensive tackle from the University of Kansas. Mike, a 6'4", 247. A five-yard penalty being paced off, so it moves the ball up to the 39-yard line. The down remains the third down, but now it's about seven yards to go for the first down. Chad Hanulak into the football game. Lou Carpenter leaving. Hanulak at the running halfback position. Ray Renfro is the flanker. He's way out to the right. O'Connell calls the signals. Again, the Lions in their five-man line. The flip goes to Hanulak. He's going to throw the football. He throws. It is intercepted. Ted Hanulak trying to pass to Ray Renfro, but it was intercepted by Jim David. And the Lions have the ball. Tommy O'Connell gave to Chad Hanulak. He started to run out to his right as if it were a running play. Then he threw the pass. Intercepted by Jim David at the Brown 46-yard line. And so the Lions again have the ball in Cleveland Territory at the Brown 46. First down, 10 yards to go for Detroit in the Cleveland 46. The Lions in front by a score of 24-7. to Detroit out of the huddle. Doran split way out of the right. There's a fumble. Tobin Road in getting the snap back. Did not get it from Frank Gunner Gatsky. There's a pile up there. It looks like it was either Road or Stan Campbell who fell on the ball. Tobin Road recovered. So he fumbled and recovered at about the 47. A loss of a yard on the play. Bob Gain was in there hitting for it also. He was the boy who hit Tobin Road. 
just as he got the snapback or was reaching for it. So on the 47-yard line, it's second down for Detroit, 11 yards to go. The Blue Jersey Lions out of the huddle. Dave Middleton moving out to the left. The right end, Jim Doran, is split out. There's the snap back to Rhodes. He's back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It's good to, to Junker. He has it at the 40. He's at the 35. Down to the 30. He fumbles. The ball is in the playing field. It is picked up by Don Paul down inside the 10 in Cleveland territory. And down he goes at the six-yard line. Top along Cassidy, I believe, who, who made the tackle on the play. It was Waller Michaels who hit Steve Junker who caught the ball originally, wrote to Junker. Junker had moved out of about the Browns' 20-yard line. He was hit hard by Michaels. George fell loose from the ball, and the ball went to the 6-yard line, where Don Paul picked it up, started to run with it, but was dropped by Hopalong Cassidy. So the Browns have it first and 10 on their own 6-yard line. About five minutes left to play in the first half. The Browns out of the huddle. Tommy O'Connell calling the signals. The right end, Preston Carpenter, split way out. The flanker rent throws to the left. The flip goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He comes forward over the five to about the eight-yard line, and there's a the fumble. He was hit hard by Darius McCord, the left end of the Detroit Lions. So let's see now who has the pig skin on this one. Fred Robinson racing in from the Browns' bench. They're still digging for that football. Down there inside the 10. Mike McCormick was the boy who came up with it at the 8-yard line. So the Browns gained 2 yards on the fumble. And the ball is on the 8. It is second down and 8 yards to go at that spot. The Browns huddle back in their end zone. They have Tommy O'Connell at quarterback. Renfro the flanking back. Kanyalak is the running halfback. And Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Preston Cup in the right end split way out. O'Connell gives this time to Jimmy Brown on the draw, and he goes nowhere. He is dropped at the six-yard line by Roger Zatkoff and Gene Cronin. Roger Zatkoff, the linebacker who was with the Browns during the preseason training period. He is from the University of Michigan, makes his home here in Detroit. Gene Cronin played his college football at College of Pacific. His home was in Sacramento, California. So the line of scrimmage is now the six-yard line. That's where the Browns started. It'll be third down and ten yards to go. As Jimmy Brown lost the two yards that were picked up on the previous play. Cleveland out of the huddle. Third down and ten. Brewster to the left end. Split way out. Zatkoff over there to cover him. O'Connell throwing over this way. It is intercepted by Terry Barr, and it's going to be a touchdown. throwing from his end zone intended for Pete Brewster at about the 18-yard line in Cleveland Territory picked off by the speedy Terry Barr the former Michigan star who raced down the near sideline no one had a chance now Tobin Road holding at the 10-yard line Jim Martin boots and it's good the point is good the score is the Detroit Lions 31 30 rather and the Cleveland Browns 7 when it comes to buying cars, I guess most people are looking for some way to get more for less. And surprising as it may seem, a simple comparison can show you just how to do that. Just compare Pontiac with cars in the low price class. You'll find no matter which way you look at it, style, performance, comfort, or value, the Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price three and for less money. The Chieftain's bigger with a whopping 122-inch wheelbase and Pontiac's roomy stretch-out interiors. The Chieftain's more powerful. They all fall far short of Pontiac's jeweled action Tempest 395 performance. The Chieftain's more advanced in design with aero frame stability, quadrupoise rotability, and circles of steel safety. And the Pontiac Chieftain gives you dozens of extras at no extra cost. For example, twice as many color choices, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting standard on even the lowest price models, oversized tires, safety flat glass all around, crank-operated many panes, and many others. Believe me, any way you compare it, the Pontiac Chieftain beats the best. Martin kicking off. Jimmy Brown takes it in the end zone. He's to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35. Cuts to his left. He's at the 45-yard line of the 46, and there he's tackled. Up along Cassidy. 
making the tackle for the Detroit Lions. The kick went all the way into the Browns' end zone. It was high. The Lions were downfield quickly, but Jimmy Brown broke away from a couple of them and returned upfield to the 46-yard line in Cleveland territory, where it'll be first down for Cleveland, 10 yards to go. And I believe Milt Plum is in the backfield at quarterback, replacing Tommy O'Connell. Three minutes left to play in the first half. Detroit 31, the Cleveland Browns 7. Renfro out to the right. Chet Hanulak to the left in the double wing this time. Both ends split by about four yards. Mel Plum and the quarterback draws at the 50, the 45. He cuts to his right and gets to the 40, the 36-yard line where he is tackled by Terry Barr. On the quarterback draw, Mel Plum, the Brown fine rookie quarterback from Penn State, set up as if to pass and then took off up the middle and got to the Lions' 36-yard line before Terry Barr made the tackle for the Detroit team. So it's first and 10 for the Browns on the Detroit 36. And the Browns have their work cut out for them if they hope to get back in this football game. They trail by a score of 31 to 7 with just a couple of minutes remaining in the first half. Plum calls the signals. He fakes to Hanulak. He goes back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Almost intercepted by Jim David down at the 20 yard line. Preston Carpenter, the intended receiver at the 20, almost intercepted by Jim David. So on the incompletion, of course, the clock has stopped. And it's second down, 10 yards to go for the Browns on the Detroit 36-yard line. The Cleveland backfield has Mill Plum at quarterback, Ray Renfro the flanking back, Chet Hanulak the running halfback, and Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Renfro goes out to the right, Hanulak to the left. As again, we have the double wing. The Lions up there in a six-man line. The rush will be on this time. Plum back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is intercepted. Joe Smith, the Lion captain, has it down at the 19-yard line. He was tackled immediately by Preston Carpenter. It was intended for Carpenter. And it was Carpenter who made the tackle. So the Lions take over on the interception by their captain, Joe Schmidt, at the Detroit 19-yard line. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WGY, WGFM Schenectady. That's the fourth forward pass intercepted by the Lions this afternoon. The two-minute warning has been given to the benches. Here at Briggs Stadium, both benches are on the same side of the field. 31-7, to the Lions leading. They came out of the huddle and now are going back in there. The fourth interception, three of them against Tommy O'Connell and this one against rookie quarterback Mills Plum. The Lions huddle back inside the 10-yard line. Tobin Rowe doing a fine job directing their attack this afternoon. The Detroit fans giving a cheer for their football team as the Lions break out of the huddle. Door in the right end, slips by about 15. Middleton is the flanking back out to the left. Rowe calls the signals. He takes, hands out to Cassidy. Cassidy going to his left, gets to the 21-yard line, and there he's hit. Howard Cassidy, tackled by Walter Michaels, who dro- dove in at around his ankles to make the stop. Cassidy, 5'9", 180 pounds. Heisman Trophy winner, of course, for the Lions' number one draft choice a couple of years ago. The ball on the 21-yard line in Detroit territory. A minute and a half left to play in the first half of this championship game. For the Lions, a fired-up football team way out in front, 31-7. to Doran, this time, is out to the right. Middleton to the left. Junker, the left end, split by just a couple of yards. The handoff goes to Cassidy. He's up over the 25 to the 26-yard game. game. A gain of uh, five yards on the play from the 21 to the 26. Don Colo, the Browns' defensive captain, and their big right tackle making the tackle on that play. Colo, 6'3", 251 pounds from Brown University. Cassidy is leaving the ball game, and Gene Gedman comes back in with only about 50 seconds left to play in the first half. It is third down and about three yards to go for Detroit. The ball on the Lions, 26. Doran is out to the right. Middleton to the left this time. Jetski over the ball at center. Tobin Road calls the signals. There's a marker down there, and now Tobin Road is being hit by Costello, Don Colo, Galen Fitz. There will be a penalty on the play. Let's wait now to get the official call from the referee. Offside signal against the Detroit Lions. Detroit, offside, it'll move the ball. 
Back to the 21 if the Browns elect to accept it. First be fourth down. The penalty declined. So now it's fourth down with just about 35 seconds left to play. The ball is on the Detroit 23-yard line. That's where Roke was stopped by Colo. Chad Handelak and Billy Reynolds back in the double safety for the Browns. They stand inside their 40-yard line. And to do the kicking is Yale Larry. And Larry is inside his 10-yard line at about the 8th. Just 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Gatsky over the ball at center. He snaps his head up twice. There's the long snap back from center. Larry gets the kick away. Billy or Chen Hanulak signals for a fair catch and takes it at the 44-yard line in Cleveland Territory. Larry kicks to the Cleveland Browns. 44, a fair catch signaled for by Chet the Jet Hanulak, a 33-yard punt for Yale Larry. And the official, the referee, Ron Gibbs, signals the time is back in now. But I believe the Browns are now going to call for timeout. With just uh, 17 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock, the official time, of course, is kept right down on the playing field by the umpire. Milt Plum is in there at quarterback. Chet Hanulak, the running half. Ray Renfro, the flanker. Jimmy Brown, the fullback. The Browns trail by a score of 31-7 to with 17 seconds left to play in the first half of this football game before a capacity crowd at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. Ray Scott, do you have anything to say right now? Well, I, I imagine right now we're going to see the Detroit Lions, as most teams would on that occasion, go into a strictly pass defensive setup, dropping a lot of men back. For you fans right now, remember this. No other car looks, rides, or performs like a new Pontiac, because no other car is built like a Pontiac. I'd like to make one reference, if I may, Bill, to this weather today. We had dire predictions, of course, all week long as to exactly what condition we would find the playing field in. I think it is excellent, considering the fact that the bad weather was certainly predominant in Detroit this week. And I think the ground crew here at Briggs Stadium has done a fine job. And certainly so far, the condition of the field has had little to do with the type of play we have seen. And now the Browns move out of the huddle with 17 seconds left to play in the first half. At first and ten of their own 44. Plum is at quarterback. The Lions have their three-man line up there. Plum fakes to Hanulak, fakes to Renfro. He goes back to pass. He throws. Renfro was the intended receiver, I believe. Jimmy Brown jumped up there and had his fingers on it at the 43-yard line in Detroit territory. But it's incomplete. It bounced off the fingertips of Jimmy Brown. Renfro also out in that same general area. Plum that time, first faking the end around, or faking to Handulak, then faking to the flanking back Renfro, who was out on the right side, and then throwing downfield, but it's incomplete, second and ten, with just about uh, nine or ten seconds left to play in the first half. Plum barks the signals. This time he fakes to Handulak, he fumbles, and it is recovered by Gil Maines of the Detroit Lions. With just about four or five seconds left to play, the Lions again get a break as Gil Means recovers the fumble. Bill Plum in trying to hand off to Hanulak. Hanulak did not get it. And we may have a field goal try. With just about eight seconds, or five seconds, I should say, left to play in the first half. Jim Martin is in there. The ball is resting on the Browns. 37-yard line. The Lions talking things over at the Browns 45-yard line. The score is 31 to 7. Now, of course, uh, earlier in this football game, Jim Martin and Tobin Roach set up as if to try for a field goal. Instead, it was a fake, and it went for 26-yard pass play for a touchdown. Tobin Roach, after getting the snap from center, picked it up and started to run out to his right. And pass to rookie and Steve Junker for that score. Time out on the playing field right now with the clock showing just four or five seconds left to play in the first half. And I'm sure that the first half play in this game has come as quite a surprise to many pro football fans around the nation. 
It was regarded as a toss-up affair. Of course, the Lions are seeking revenge for a 56-10 humiliation they suffered at Cleveland in 1954. Root is set to hold the ball at the 44-yard line. It's spotted. It's booted. It is no good. It's off to the left. The 44-yard field goal try is no good, and the score remains 31-7. to That's the end of the first half. The score, the Detroit Lions 31, the Cleveland Browns 7. Well, that's the end of the half. Let's chase away a few car-buying blues. Got those small car blues? Then here's good news. The Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price three, and for less money. It's bigger. The Pontiac beats them in size with a whopping 122 inch wheelbase. It's more powerful. Pontiac beats them in power with jeweled action Tempest 395 performance. It's more advanced. Pontiac beats them with the boldest engineering advances in 50 years and luxury. Matching interiors, even wild to wild carpeting. Let your Pontiac dealer show you why. The Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price three for less money. See your Pontiac dealer soon. At Briggs Stadium in Detroit, Michigan, Ray Scott along with Bill McCorgan at halftime of the championship game of the National Football League between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. I hope you... Because it has been tremendous. And despite the fact that the Detroit Lions lead here at halftime by a score of 31 to 7, if you will forgive that old sports broadcaster's cliche of don't go away, don't give up if you are a Cleveland Brown fan... The pattern of games in this National Football League this year would certainly, I believe, bear me out for reminding you not to go away. We need only, in fact, go back to a week ago today when these same Detroit Lions on top today by 31 to 7 trailed at halftime 24 to 7. on to win. It could well be we'll have that sort of a game here today in Detroit. Statistics sometimes are very dry, but I do believe that we have some statistics here that are very important as far as telling the story of what has transpired in the first half. The alertness, certainly, of the Detroit Lions defense has been tremendous. They have come up in the way of pass interceptions with four. They have come up with key recoveries of Cleveland Brown fumbles. One on a kickoff that led directly to a touchdown, for example. In addition to that, they have come up with the element of surprise. As witness, the apparent attempt for a field goal that saw Tobin Road, who holds the ball for field goal attempts by the Lions' Jim Martin, instead taking the snap, rolling out to the side, and then passing to Steve Junker. So it has been an alert defensive unit on the part of the Lions. It has been tremendous strategy. Well, I, uh, at this point, with mixed emotion, glad to see you, by the way, Mr. Jones. How oh, nice to be with you. Mr. Dave Jones, the president of the Cleveland Browns. Bill, would you uh, like to join us here in our conversation? Uh, Mr. Jones, if I may, I'd like to point out that a moment ago I said that although it may be an old cliche on the part of broadcasters about don't go away if you've written off this game, I used the example of last week's game to, I think, uh, try to prove my point. And I imagine that you would agree with me right now. Yes, I do. Uh, of course, uh, there's always a second half, and you uh, never know uh, what will happen. We got away to a real bad start, a fumble on the 20-yard uh, line, and then an interception, which, of course, is 14 points scored uh, very quickly by the Detroit Lions. Now, uh, they look wonderful today, and... Uh, and uh, uh, we up to now haven't looked too good. 
Mr. Jones, I'm sorry, sorry, I was going to ask you this question. At the start of the season, did you believe that your team with the great number of rookies, 12, I believe the exact number, and other men from other clubs playing the first year with the Browns, did you believe that the Browns would be in this championship game at the end of the season? No, none of us did, including Paul Brown. We were very much surprised and pleased at the showing that our team had made. Bill, uh, as one who has followed the Browns all season long, I'm certain that uh, you'd like to chat here a little bit with Mr. Jones about this game uh, so far today and also on your impressions of the season that has just passed, the regular season. Well, Scott, uh, of course, uh, it was said many times, and uh, you too, Dave Jones, that uh, prior to this game that it might be decided on breaks, but certainly no one expected as many uh, breaks to go against the, the Browns as uh, have done against them thus far in the football game. I've never, never seen anything like it. I'm not alibying for the Browns, but it's just one of those games where everything went right to the Lions and everything went wrong for us. Dave, uh, even though the Browns are far back here at halftime, I'm sure that as a real uh, ardent football fan that you must have en enjoyed seeing the execution of that fake field goal. Oh, it was terrific. Well, thanks. Nothing else. Being with us here at halftime, and uh, I know that the Cleveland fans are still with the Browns all the way, Dave. And oh, they sure will, and all was will be, and thanks a lot. Thanks to be with you. Congratulations to you, Mr. Jones, on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Happy New Year to you. So Dave Jones, president of the Cleveland Browns, in this professional championship game for yet another time. And, of course, you always have to say that when the Cleveland Browns are mentioned because every year since they've been in this National Football League, they have been in the championship game with the exception of last year. And as all of you pro fans know, they have come a long way. And certainly the understatement of the year would have to be attributed to Paul Brown at the National Football League's draft meeting a few weeks ago when a representative of another National Football League team said, Paul, I think of all the years that you've been coaching, this certainly should be recognized as your greatest year. And Paul looked at him and said, uh, yes, we have come a little bit farther than we had planned. And that, I do believe, was an understatement. From the standpoint of yardage, for those of you who like to make a note of figures and so forth, the Browns, as of right now, have picked up 81 yards on the ground. They have passed for 64 more yards. The Detroit Lions, meanwhile, despite their point superiority here at halftime of 31 to 7, have picked up 118 yards in the air and 94 yards on the ground. It's just fairly close. Individually, Tobin Roth has moved to the airways 14 times and has completed seven. As we told you, the yardage involved was 94, 95 yards. Tommy O'Connell, who started the game offensively at quarterback for Cleveland, has passed eight times, completed four, and has two intercepted. Yardage, 64 yards. Milt Plum, who came in late in the second period, passed three times, had one interception, and failed to complete a pass. In case you've just tuned in, the score is the Detroit Lions, 31, the Cleveland Browns, 7. Right now, Pontiac and your authorized Pontiac dealer would like to express their pleasure at having been able to share the first half of this great sports classic with you and to thank you for being with us. The men and women of Pontiac and all the Pontiac dealers across the country join together in wishing you a happy new year and invite you to stop in at your Pontiac dealers this week to see and drive the big, bold Pontiac, America's number one road car. We pause now for station identification. This is the NBC Radio Network. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Do you back the attack on traffic accidents? You do if you give solid support to traffic officials, if you take part in local safety activities, and if you bring your own driving performance up to state standards. The National Safety Council urges the support of every person who drives, rides, or even walks to join this life-saving campaign. Back the attack on traffic accidents. The 
second half of today's World Championship professional football game between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns is brought to you over the entire NBC radio network by High Grade Food Products Corporation and its Kingan, Carson, and Deerfoot Farms Division. High Grade, spelled H-Y-G-R-A-D-E, serves the nation with quality meat from 51 plants coast to coast. And now back to Ray Scott, who has for you right now another interesting halftime guest. A moment ago, Bill and I were chatting with the president of the Cleveland Browns, Mr. Dave Jones. Right now, it is our pleasure to chat with a man who walked into our NBC radio booth with a smile from ear to ear, and with good reason. Here at halftime, the president of the Detroit Lions, Mr. Edwin J. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, I think that I uh, interpreted that smile, of course, for uh, a reflection of that score right now. Well, Ray, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to smile very much this year. I can smile at the end of the game, but uh, we probably have had some of the most hectic and dramatic finishes in the entire history of pro football. And I'm not uh, I'm not smiling too much, even with 31-7, to 7, because I found from experience that anything can happen. This indeed would be, uh, I don't know whether the right word is a paradox, it's certainly ironic that to get to this championship game, the Lions had to be one of the great second half teams of all of National Football League history, having troubles in the first half. Here you are now on top of the lead. Are you going to begin to worry now, Mr. Adams? Ray, I am going to worry very, very much because, as you said, we've been a very poor first half team, but by the law of averages, I told the boys today that I said you should get hot in the first half, but uh, our problem is to stay hot in the second half. I know, Mr. Anderson, that you would like to make at least some comment of this tremendous support that the Detroit Lions have received from the fans in the Detroit and surrounding areas. Well, the fans here of, uh, in the Michigan, Ohio, and Toledo area that we sort of call our home base uh, have been most fantastic, and uh, we've had a, a complete sellout for every game, and I'm sure that if we were playing in the 100,000-seat stadiums today, that uh, we would sell it, but unfortunately there's one here, but we're not allowed to play in from the standpoint, then, of support not only of the Detroit Lions, but all of the National Football League generally this year. This truly would be, I imagine, uh, the greatest year as far as you're concerned for the league. Uh, yes, attendance-wise, at home, uh, we've played to 15,000 more people than we did a year ago. And while that doesn't sound very significant, I just want to remind you listeners that uh, uh, we can't get any more people in the stands. And what we need right now is a good stadium stretcher for Brick Stadium. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Mr. Anderson, for being with us. We appreciate it. And if we may, Bill and I are speaking for NBC Radio. Our best wishes to you and a happy new year. Thank you, and the same to you and to all the fans across the country. Thanks, Mr. Edwin J. Anderson, the president of the Detroit Lions, leading here at halftime in the Pro Championship game by a score of 31-7. to Bill, uh, I think right now that our folks, uh, being perhaps in a holiday mood, would enjoy having a bit of our music from here at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. Huh, Bill? Hooray, Scott. Uh, they tell me in just a moment maybe we'll get a little bit of music. Uh, but right now we have the official statistics and also some other halftime guests here at the intermission between the second and third period in this pro football championship game between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. And the Lions, in case you joined us late, are leading by a score of 31 to 7, scoring 17 points in the first period, 14 more in the second, while the Browns' long touchdown came in the second quarter. Ray Scott, you have another guess, huh? That I do. And while we have just a couple of moments before the start of the second half, it's a, a great pleasure to welcome the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who is here to watch the game in person today, Mr. Arthur J. Rooney. Well, Art, uh, I imagine you yourself as an owner would like to see a game like this played in Pittsburgh some year. I certainly would, Ray, and I hope it won't be long now. And uh, how about some comments on the game, Art? You're more than an owner. You're a fan and a former player. Well, it's an excellent game, I believe, that the Detroit Club so far in the first half has received the breaks, and if the uh, breaks go to Cleveland in the second half, I think you'll see a great ball game. Thanks very much, Art. Nice to have you drop by here, and uh, happy new year to you. Mr. Art Rooney, president of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And here from the city of Pittsburgh itself, and a great sports fan, I happen to know, is the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh, 
Mayor David L. Lawrence. Well, Your Honor, uh, how about your uh, professional comments? I know that you're uh, more than a fan, by golly. I look at you as somewhat of an expert. Well, this is a great ball game, Ray. I'm happy to see you up here. I brought my two grandsons up. They wanted to see the game. And, of course, we're getting a thrill out of it, rooting for Detroit because they're away ahead. And uh, the fact that Joe Schmidt plans to good ball game. Well, uh, picking out, of course, uh, the mayor was referring to Joe Schmidt, who's a native of Pittsburgh and a former star at the University of Pittsburgh. One final question, Your Honor. And this is a leading question. Would you like to see a pro championship game in Pittsburgh sometime? You know, Ray, that's really why I came up here. I wanted to get the atmosphere because I expect uh, Buddy Parker within the next year or two to be bringing a game like this to Pittsburgh. Thanks very much, Your Honor. Mayor of the city of Pittsburgh, Your Honor, David O. Lawrence. Thanks to him for dropping by as well. Well, now, Bill, I think uh, you did have a couple of statistics there. And here's the commissioner. By golly, glad to see that he was able to drop by. So, Bill, how about you making introductions here of the commissioner of the National Football League? Thank you, Ray. It's a real pleasure for me to present to our NBC listening audience the commissioner of the National Football League, Mr. Bert Bell. Bert, uh, has the first half of this football game come to you as any surprise? Well, uh, everything in pro football is a surprise because we never play defense. We just keep playing offense all the time, and the ball moves up and down the field, and it's the bounce of the ball, and nobody knows what's going to happen in the second quarter, the third quarter, or the fourth quarter. And that's why the people, uh, we've broken the attendance record nine out of the last 12 years, the last six years in a row, and this year we're 11% over and above the greatest year we ever had. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, if the attendance continues to grow from year to year, it uh, would seem that some new city are going to have to be built around this country. No. You see, as long as we have our friend Mayor Lawrence in Pittsburgh working on our stadium and one in Washington, get a little better parking and help a little bit in Philadelphia, why, that'll take care of that extra attendance. And, uh, we're doing all right where we are. Commissioner, there has been some word in uh, recent weeks about the possibility of the league expanding. Do you care to say anything about that? Well, I think there's a possibility, but I think before the league ever expands, if you're going to put in two cities or two teams, you've got to give those two uh, people the first select, second selection choice for two years in a row before you can win. There's no use going in without a football team. May I ask, Commissioner, where were those players then play in the first year after they were selected? Well, they belong to different ball clubs. But uh, I mean, say, you say that uh, draft for two years, but they would, that other team wouldn't come into the league from two no, years in the not future. Still they had a football. Well, they would, would they play around uh, the league? At oh, that yeah. Time? Well, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Bert Bell, for being with us. Congratulations to you and the league office on another wonderful season of pro football. Thanks very much to you, fellas. We owe a great debt of gratitude to you, fellas, that advertise us so well and do a great job for us. And everybody in this league appreciates it. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Commissioner. We'll be all set to go with a second half kickoff in just a moment. I would like to say a couple of words about high grades all beef sanctity. Hot dogs! My grade is high grade. I'm here to say that it always has been my belief. That the Franks I eat should be quality meat. I always ask for high grade because they're all pure beef. High grade, high grade, my grade, high grade. Always ask for high grade because they're all pure beef. You bet they're all pure beef. High grades all beef frankfurters are different from any other kind. Each plump wiener is fairly bursting with rich, robust, zesty flavor. The kind of flavor that made the chuck wagon meals famous for good eating all over the West. Yes, high grades all beef frankfurters make a real satisfying meal. Their feet under the table, man filling food. Serve them at a time. Lunch, dinner, snack time, you love them. High grades all beef frankfurters. Hot dogs! The Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions have returned to the playing field here at Briggs Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. All set for a play in the third period of this championship game with the Lions in front of the Browns by a score of 31-7 to as a result of scoring 17 points in the first period, adding 14 more in the second. We have some official statistics. First downs rushing for Detroit 7, the Browns 4. Passing the Lions 6, the Browns 3. By penalty, none. Total first downs, Detroit 13, the Browns 7. Yards gained rushing, the Lions 95, the Browns 89. Passing, Detroit 125, Cleveland 54. 
Yards lost, attempted passing, Detroit none, Cleveland seven. Total yards gained, that's net, 220 for the Lions, 143 for the Browns. The Lions have taken to the air 14 times. Tobin Rudd has completed seven of them. The Browns have thrown 12 times, completed only four. And the Lions, and this has uh, been a big factor in the game thus far, have intercepted four of the Cleveland passes, two of Tommy O'Connell's, one of Chad Hanulak, and one of Mel Swan. The Lions have already received instructions from their coaching staff. They're all set to receive the kickoff for the third period. The Browns are still huddled around their head coach, Paul Brown, who undoubtedly had something to say to them at halftime in the locker room in an attempt to get back into this championship football game. The Browns are now moving out on the field, so here again with a play-by-play of the third period of this football game is Ray Scott. Right, Bill McCorgan, and I think at this moment I would like to make mention of the coaching staff of these two teams. For the Cleveland Browns, we know the head coach is Paul Brown. His assistants are Howard Brinker, Paul Bixler, Fritz Heisler, Eddie Ulinski, and Dick Gallagher. The Detroit Lions are headed by George Wilson, his first year as head coach. His assistants are Aldo Forty, Buster Ramsey, Red Cochran, and Bob Nussbaumer. The Cleveland Browns will kick off to start the second half. The Detroit Lions will receive at the goal line to our left the north goal. Kicking off will be Lou Groza. In position to receive for Detroit's deep at the goal line will be Gene Gedman and Yale Larry. Now, Tom Tracy was aided from the field following the first half, and we do not expect to see him in the second half, but we are not sure. The whistle. He comes up to the ball. His boot is high, fairly deep. Larry at the goal line. To the five up the middle, 10. 15 swings to the right, 20. 25-yard line, he snowed under. Yale Larry. Jim Ray Smith was the first Cleveland Brown to make contact. And so the Lions have the ball, first down and 10, their own 25-yard line, moving left to right here in the third period on the long end of a 31-7 lead, fashioned not only by their offensive unit, but by tremendous play by their defensive unit. Four pass interceptions being very key ones, and two recoveries of Cleveland Brown fumbles. First and 10, Detroit at their own 25-yard line, and the lights have been turned on here at Briggs Stadium. Tobin Road is under center. John Henry Johnson and Gedman at the running back positions. Cassidy is an outside flanker to the left. The snap, it is up the middle. Gedman gets just a couple before he's met by linebacker Galen Fitz from Kansas University. Up front, it is Frank Gadsky at center. The guards are Harley Sewell and Stan Campbell. The tackles are Luke Creekmer and Ken Russell. The ends are Steve Junker and Jim Doran. The flanker, Howard Hopalong Cassidy. Gene Gedman, John Henry Johnson at the running backs, and Tobin Rhodes under center at quarterback. Second down, seven. Cassidy flanks left, Jim Doran split right. A pitch out that goes wild. It is recovered by Cleveland at the line of scrimmage. Tobin Rhodes trying to pitch out to the left. Lou Creekmer recovered that fumble. A pickup perhaps of a half yard as the ball rolled forward that much from the line of scrimmage. It comes to the 28-yard line, and it is third down and a long six yards to go for a first down. The playing field now completely covered by shadow here at Briggs Stadium. Cassidy breaks out of the huddle and flanks to the right. The split left end is Doran. Third down between six and seven for Detroit. Tobin wrote under center. The snap. Looks, throws. Cassidy has it at the 34, rolls forward to the 35. Fumble. Cleveland is on the ball. The question now is whether the fumble occurred before or after the whistle. It was after the whistle, so ruled by the officials. Warren Lahr made the tackle on Cassidy. It is short of a first down by a half yard. Fourth down coming up for Detroit. The kicking unit has not come in. The Lions looking to the bench. Tobin Roque comes up now and says that he wants to see how close it is to a first down. Four members of the Detroit Lion kicking team had started onto the field. Tobin Rote now is leaving the field, and the kicking unit takes over, led by Yale Larry. The Detroit Lions make their changes. The Cleveland Browns make changes. They're sending back in punt receiving position. Chet Hanulak on the left and Billy Reynolds on the right. Larry will punt from the Detroit Lion, 20-yard line. Early in the third quarter, 31-7 to score. The Lions on top. A high pass from center. 
Larry gets it. His boot is a high and a very deep one. Drives Reynolds back to the 19-yard line. Swings to the right. Cut from behind at the 20. Cut from behind by John Gordy, the rookie guard from Tennessee. He was aided by Dorn Dibble, and the ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line of Cleveland. A 45-yard punt from line of scrimmage by Yale Larry. And so the Browns, trailing 31-7, to will scrimmage at first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Tommy O'Connell played most of the game at quarterback in the first half, although late in the second quarter, Milk Plum came in to take over, and he's in there now. The rookie from Penn State, 6'1", 205, did a great job filling in for the injured O'Connell the latter part of the regular season. Renfro flanking to the left. Both ends are tight. The snap going off to the right side. Jimmy Brown gets nothing at all as Joe Schmidt diagnosed the play and slid over to make the tackle with help from the left linebacker Bob Long. No gain. Second down, 10. Milk Plum, the quarterback. Lou Carpenter, Jimmy Brown at the running back positions. Ray Renfro will be the flanker. The ends are Pete Brewster and Preston Carpenter. Lou Groza, Mike McCormick, the tackles. Jim Ray Smith and Herschel Forrester, the guards. And Art Hunter at center. Smith alternates with Robinson with instructions from the bench from Paul Brown. Second down, 10 from the 20. Plum under center. Pitches out to the right to Carpenter. He comes up to the line of scrimmage to the 25 to the 30. Swings to the 35 to the right sideline. 40, 45, and upended at the 48-yard line. Pete Brewster threw the big block for him that time to spring him loose from the line of scrimmage. Jim David finally made the tackle, but it's a long gain for Lou Carpenter. From the 20 to the 47, 27 yards. The ball at the inbounds marker far side of the field. The Browns are moving right to left. Early in the third period, about three minutes have been played. 31 to 7, Detroit's on top. Carpenter. Preston Carper splits out to the right. The left end is fairly tight. Renfro flanks outside the left end. Swinging out to the left side is Preston Carpenter. Gets away from two tacklers. Is stormed under at the 49. Lou Carpenter. Just shy of the 50. His forward progress marked the 49 and a half. And it's Gil Maines and Bob Long who are the key men defensively for Detroit on that play. A gain of three. Second down, seven. The Browns within a half yard of crossing midfield. About... Ten minutes now remaining in the third quarter. There's been no scoring in this period. Ray Renfro flanks out to the right. Carpenter splits a couple of yards. Pete Brewster splits left a couple. It's a double wing now. Lou Carpenter comes out to the left, and O'Connell fades to plum fades the pass. It is complete to Carpenter at the 35, comes to the 32-yard line, and there he's upended. Preston Carpenter, the right end, brought down by Jim David as he apparently was going to be brought down by about three different Detroit Lions, but he was able to wrestle away from them and move down to the 32-yard line. And the Browns are on the move. The Detroit Lions punted to Cleveland a moment ago. Lou Carpenter, a 27-yard run, now took the pass. At the 32-yard line of Detroit, it is first down and 10, and Renfro flanks to the right. The ends are tight. Off to the right guard position goes Lou Carpenter across the 30 to the 28-yard line after a fake first to the fullback up the middle. Joe Schmidt brings him down to the 28, a four-yard pickup. The game is being brought to you by High Graves, spelled H-Y-G-R-A-D-E. Try High Graves All Beef Frankfurters, the only Franks with that real Western chuck wagon flavor. Gain of four in the last play, second down six, and Renfro breaks huddle and flanks out to the right. As so far, the Browns are keeping their ends in tight on this series. Milk Plum under center. The snap, fake to two men, rolls out to the right, looking for a receiver. He's being chased, he throws, he has Carpenter at the 18, and he's down at the 16. Preston Carpenter, the right end. Went down, went out, Milk Plum rolled out to the right, spotted him and hit him with a strike. Joe Schmidt made the tackle, the ball at the 16-yard line. It'll be another first down for the Cleveland Browns. The Browns need this ball, and they need a touchdown. They're trailing 31-7. to Unofficial time remaining about eight minutes in the third quarter. Jim David comes out. Jack Christensen moves in for Detroit in the secondary as Renfro flanks to the right and Pete Brewster's foot at left end. Milk Plum the snap. Swinging out to the left is Jimmy Brown. He has one blocker in front of him. He's being chased. He gets to the 15. He gets to the 10-yard line, swinging out to the left and out of bounds. And there, Carl Karolevitz, 
Hits him with a shoulder tackle and spins him out. Jim Ray Smith led the blocking from his left guard position. He pulled out, was in front of Jimmy Brown, and threw a real good block and enabled him to pick up six. The ball spotted now at the inbounds marker near side of the field at the 10-yard line. And it is second down and a little better than five yards to go for a first down. The score, 31 to 7. The Browns trailing, but the Browns have the ball. The only sustained drive of the third period so far. Renfro again flanks out to the right. This time, Milk Plum has his ends in tight. Brown and Carpenter in running position behind him. The snap. Brown off left guard gets only a foot, if that much. Coming up from the secondary, Carl Carl Evitz. Up front, Roger Zatkoff from his right linebacking position came up. They spotted that one coming, and Brown gets nothing as the ball is spotted at the 10 again. And it'll be third down and five. And again, the guard comes in. Jim Ray Smith. Out goes Fred Robinson. Third down, five yards to go for a first down. And the Browns desperately need a touchdown. Ray Renfro flanks about 15 yards outside the right end who split a yard. Carpenter, plumb under center. The snap fades directly back to pass. He's looking. He throws out to the right to Carpenter. He has it to six. He's belted out of bounds at the five. Preston Carpenter takes the pass out in the right flat. Is hit out of bounds by Yale Larry. This will be very close to a first down, so the officials will not move the ball from the point where Carpenter went out of bounds. And we have an official timeout for a measurement, and the chains on the near side of the field have to go all the way across to the far side. And Lou Groza is standing over there to look at it. The chains are stretched. First down by just the nose of the ball at the five. First and goal to go. And so the Browns' milk plum comes up with the yardage that he must have to keep this drive going. A field goal at this point would mean practically nothing to the Browns, and they know it. First and goal to go on the Detroit Lions' five-yard line, and two replacements come in for Cleveland. The one is the guard, Fred Robinson was Preston Carpenter. He was just over asking for instructions. He comes back in at right end. This time it's a fairly tight tee. Renfro a yard outside the left end. First and goal at the five. Out to the left side comes Carpenter. Preston Carpenter. He cuts and he's into the end zone. It was Lou Carpenter, not Preston Carpenter. Lou wearing number 30, not Preston number 40, but he's into the end zone and the Browns have that touchdown that they needed. And they trail now by a score of 31 to 13. And there are still seven minutes remaining in the third quarter, and Lou Groza will be in to attempt the extra point. He tried 32 during the regular season, and he made every one of them. He converted his only other chance today. 80 yards and 10 plays for the Browns, as Groza, with O'Connell holding, will try for the extra point. The ball is down, the kick is in the air. It is good. The point is good. The score now, the Detroit Lions 31, the Cleveland Browns 14. I would like to say a couple of words about high grade's KP party loaf. Delicious! My grade is high grade, I'm here to say that it always has been my belief. That the meat I eat should be quality meat. I always ask for high grade if I can't meet treat. Thanks to an amazing new super speed canning process, KP Party Loaf is the only luncheon meat with super flavor. Yes, ma'am, it's super special. Serve it baked, broiled, fried, or slice it cold right from the can. Delicious. KP Party Loaf is super thrifty, too. Cost just pennies a portion. Get some tomorrow. I drink, I drink, my drink, and I drink. I always get for high grade because it's all good meat. Lou Groza preparing to kick off for the Browns with Gedman and Larry deep to receive. As the Browns have started what uh, their followers hope will be a second half comeback. Groza comes to the ball. Fairly deep. Into the end zone, Larry, two yards deep, comes to the five, swings to the left, back to the right, 15, 20, spins away from two tacklers, but is down at the 22. Board clock. And the sun continues to shine here in Detroit, and we're aided by the lights that were turned on at halftime here at Briggs Stadium. Cassidy flanks out to the left. Johnson, Gedman in the running back positions, and out to the right split at the end is Doran. Roach throws deep. He's 
Doran's there. He has it at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. He's going all the way. 78 yards. Excellent protection set up for Tobin Roach, who first faked the pitch to the left, enabled him to get all the time that was necessary for Jim Doran to get behind the secondary and complete a 78-yard pass and run play. Jim Martin tries for the conversion. The ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. So the Lions, striking with suddenness, have equalized the Cleveland Brown touchdown, an extra point here in the third period, to go 78 yards on a pass and run from Tobin Road to Jim Doran. It isn't very often that the members of that Cleveland Brown secondary see a man get behind him the way Jim Doran did that time. Am I right in saying that, Bill? That one came uh, like lightning. Well, uh, of course, the name Jim Doran is familiar to Cleveland football fans because it was the same Jim Doran who made a tremendous catch after getting out in back of the secondary in the championship game here at Briggs Stadium back in 1953 to give the Lions the world championship in a 17-16 to football game over the Browns. That time, Doran just went down the near sideline, got out in back of the Browns secondary, and there was no catching him once he got his hands on the football. It took the Browns ten plays to get their TD. The Lions got it back in just one. Ray Scott. And we still have better than six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Jim Martin preparing to kick off for Detroit. In deep position are Billy Reynolds and Jimmy Brown for Cleveland. The kick is high, not very deep. Brown takes it at the 11. Comes to the 15, the 20, swings to the left to the 25, to the 28. Bringing him down, Jim Martin, who kicked off along with Gary Lowe, defensive back of Detroit, who is in there on the kickoff team. First down and 10, the Browns at their own 28-yard line, between the 27 and 28 to be exact. Detroit, 38, as they have scored in every period, 17 in the first, 14 in the second, 7 here in the third. The Browns, single touchdowns in the second and third quarters. Renfro flanks out to the right, no plum is under center. There is movement on the part of both lines, a considerable amount of body contact, and the ball hasn't been snapped yet. So there is the usual huddle. We watch the referee offside against Cleveland. Illegal use of hands against Detroit. The penalties nullify each other. The infractions nullify each other. And we start all over again. First and ten, Cleveland from their own 27-yard line. The Browns moving right to left in the third quarter. Again, the Browns break huddle, and Renfro flanks out to the right, and Pete Brewster splits left by about eight yards. Plum the snap and fades the pass. From the 20, he looks, throws over the middle. Brewster has it at the 40, fumbles. It is incomplete. He had it for just an instant, not enough to retain control, rule the officials. And so the loose ball means nothing. It's just an incomplete pass. Second down and ten come up again. Jack Christensen was back there to cover Pete Brewster. The pass was thrown right over the middle by Milt Plum. The guards interchange again for the Browns, and bringing instructions in from the bench is Fred Robinson, the rookie guard from the University of Washington. Renfro flanks right. Pete Brewster splits left. Brown, Lou Carpenter in the running back positions. The snap and Plum fades to pass. He's back up. He is hit. And down he goes at the 17. As that time, the Detroit Lions used the strategy of shoot the gap with the linebackers. And along with Krause and Maines, the linebackers were really in there, and Plum never had a chance. And he loses from the 27 to the 17. A loss of 10. Third down now and 20. Whistle on the field. With the Cleveland Browns taking time out, the score is the Detroit Lions 38, the Cleveland Browns 14. 
Do you know what the difference is between high grades West Virginia brand hams and ordinary hams? Just listen. High grade takes the choicest hams, cuts out the shank and angle bones. That makes it easier for you to slice, you know. Removes the skin and trims off all excess fat. They're slow smoked and cooked by high grade's very own sweetenizing process with hickory fires. Until that sweet smoked in flavor seeps through center deep. Man, that's luxury eating. Yet they're thrifty, too, because you pay for only the eats of the ham. No undesirable skin, bones, or fat. So easy to slice, so tender and luscious. Only High Grade makes West Virginia brand deluxe ham packed in a shiny aluminum foil wrap. And for those who prefer hams in convenient cans, High Grade and Kingham produce delicious canned hams in every size for every need. High Grade and its Kingham division serving the nation with quality meats from 51 plants coast to coast. We're in the midst of a timeout called by the Cleveland Browns with third down and 20 coming up on their own 17-yard line following a 10-yard loss by their quarterback, Milt Plum, as the Detroit Lions shot their linebackers. They have had four linebackers in there. Jim Martin came into the game into the defensive unit, but he has now been replaced by Jerry Perry, third-year man with the Detroit Lions. So we now have Darius McCord, Gil Maines, Gene Cronin along the front line, four linebackers, one or several of whom may line up on the front line. We're ready to go again with Milt Plum under center on third down and 20 from the Brown 17. Plum the snap, gives off to Jimmy Brown, and he comes up the middle to the 20. Jerry Perry, who just came into the game, met him there, along with Darius McCord, the left end, it is a gain of three. Fourth down, 17 coming up for the Browns from their own 20-yard line. And the kicking unit comes in for Cleveland with a little better than five minutes remaining in the third quarter. As the Lions led at halftime by 31-7, to the Browns scored first here in the third quarter to make it 31-14, but the Lions came back on the 78-yard route to Doran pass and run. The Browns now in punt formation will have Kenny Collins kicking from the five. Back to receive for Detroit, Terry Barr, Yale Larry. The pass from center, the punt. Fair catch by Larry at the 41-yard line of Detroit. Coming down very fast under that punt for Cleveland was Bobby Freeman, their first-year man from Auburn. A 39-yard punt from line of scrimmage. The Detroit Lions now in the air so far today unofficially have picked up better than 200 yards. First and 10, Detroit from their own, the ball is actually closer to the 42-yard line than it is the 41. Tobin Roach flanks Cassidy to the right. Splits his right end junker by a couple of yards. The snap, take to Johnson. Off to the left goes Gedman. Across the line of scrimmage and across the 45 to the 46. A pickup of four for Gedman, swinging wide to the left. Let's now pause ten seconds for station identification. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Walt Michaels, the Cleveland Browns' fine linebacker, made that last stop after a gain of four, and at second down, six. Cassidy flanks to the right. Both ends are fairly tight. Steve Junker split about a yard at right end. The snap to Rote. The fake to the first man. And Gedman over left guard. Fumbles. It is recovered by the Lions in the Cleveland Territory at the 48. John Henry Johnson recovers the fumble by Gedman. It is close to a first down. Walt Michaels again was in on that tackle. The officials indicate they would like to have a timeout here for measurement. Wrote that time, fake to Johnson, who went booming through, gave to the second man through the hole over left guard, Gene Gedman. Johnson was right there to recover that fumble. The chains are stretched, first down, at the 48-yard line of Cleveland. A most fortunate recovery for the Lions. The ball is at the inbounds marker, far side of the field. Detroit moving left to right late here in the third period. About three and a half minutes unofficially on the scoreboard clock showing, remaining in this quarter. Jim Doran will split left. Cassidy will flank right. Doran split about six yards at the left-hand position. A five-man Cleveland line with three linebackers up tight. Rote fades as if to pass, hands off to Johnson, and he is thrown way back at the Detroit Lion 46-yard line as Walt Michaels spotted that one coming. And Don Colo 
the right tackle of Cleveland broke through as well. Defensively, Cleveland has at their end positions Bill Quinlan and Lenny Ford. At the tackles, Bob Gain and Don Colo. The linebackers are Vince Costello, Galen Fiss, and Walt Michaels. Costello sometimes moves into the middle guard position when they go into a five-man line. The loss on that last play of six yards brings up second down and 16. And Cassidy flanks out to the right, and Jim Doran splits it right end a couple. Roke fades the pass, throws quick over the middle to Johnson. He's at the 45, the 40, slips and falls at the 37. John Henry Johnson took the quick pass from Roke. Very close to another first down as Don Paul made the tackle. We will again have a measurement. The gain is close to the 16 yards needed for a first down. The chains go in. Short by an inch or so. Third down coming up. Jim Doran went over to the bench to talk to George Wilson, the head coach of the Lions, and now comes back and rejoins his Detroit Lion teammates in the huddle with about two and a half minutes remaining in the third period. And no one is leaving Briggs Stadium. They remember last week when it looked like the Lions were out of it and came roaring back. Walt Michaels has set up the Cleveland Brown defense. The Lions break huddle. Cassidy flanks left. Jim Doran on the right, Junker on the left are both tight at their end positions. The snap, off to the left goes John Henry Johnson. Gets away from one man, another to the 35 to the 32-yard line. John Henry Johnson off to the left side. Tempers flare. The officials quickly push members of the Detroit Lions squad who came up to the sideline and tell them, go back to your bench. So far, they haven't responded. As Johnson picks up enough yardage by about five. For the first down, the ball is being brought into the inbounds marker and a penalty is measured off against Detroit. We'll watch the referee. A personal foul against Detroit cost them 15 yards, and Tobin Road immediately comes over to the referee, Ron Gibbs, to ask him why. Whatever the reason, it cost them 15, back to the 47-yard line of Cleveland. At that point, it will be third down and nine. Road is still talking with the officials. He has his hands on his hips. He still wants to talk to one of the officials. Now, referee Ronald Gibbs indicates to one of the members of the Cleveland Browns that he doesn't want him taking part in the discussion, but along with Don Colo, he's listening in now as three of the officials, Tobin wrote, and three of the Cleveland Browns are talking about something. Now, Tobin wrote goes back and rejoins the huddle. It is third down and nine yards to go after all of that uh, discussion. Whistle on the field, and now the Lions want to talk things over. Well, Bill, as Tobin Roth goes over to talk to the members of the Detroit Lions strategy staff, I think it's uh, proper right now that I call you in for a few comments. And although uh, you've been following the Browns, of course, all season long, and at the moment it would look like a dark hour for Cleveland, you've seen them do some amazing things, have you not? Well, they have been under pressure a couple of times when they have had to come from behind, but uh, I don't remember at any point during the season when they were this far back. In the second half against the Los Angeles Rams in a real offensive-minded game at uh, Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, they were 11 points behind and came back to win. And in a game against the Redskins at uh, Griffith Stadium in Washington, they were 10 points behind very late in the football game and came on to tie it 30-30. to But, of course, here in this football game, they're trading by a score of 38-14. to They need 24 points to get back into the football game. And we have just uh, under two minutes remaining to be played in the third period. The Lions, of course, got a tough break right there after John Henry Johnson had picked up the necessary yardage for the first down, moving to the Browns 32. The Lions were penalized and moved the ball back to the 47-yard line, where it's now third down and still about nine yards to go for the Detroit club. The trainers of both teams now leave the field, and the Lions huddle back at the 40-yard line, and here again is Ray Scott. 
All right, Bill, we're all set to go. Third down and nine. Detroit at the Cleveland 47-yard line. Tobin Road at quarterback. John Henry Johnson, Gene Gedman at the running back positions, Howard Cassidy will be the flanker. This time he flanks way out to the right, and Jim Doran's foot's left, and Steve Junker's foot to the right by about five. Four-man Cleveland line as Roke fades as if the pass runs up the middle, swings out to the right. He is caught from behind, but not until he crosses the 40 to the 38-yard line. He is close to a first down. He may have it. A penalty marker was dropped. A penalty is now measured off against Cleveland, 15 yards, illegal use of hands. It moves the ball to the Cleveland, approximately the 24-yard line. The ball itself has not been placed in position. Now it is. At the 24-yard line, it is first down and 10 for Detroit. And Walt Michaels tries to rally his teammates. He calls the defensive signals for the Browns. Vince Costello made that last tackle on Tobin Road. Doran's foot's left. Cassidy flanks to the right. Steve Junker is split about five at right end. The snap and road again fades to pass. Right over the middle it is. Junker at the 10-5. Touchdown! Backers who was shooting the gap was about to get to Tobin Roach. He spotted Steve Junker right over the middle. He wrestled away from Junior Wren and went all the way in. 23 yards. Tobin Roach will hold. Jim Martin will attempt the conversion. The snap. The kick. It is good. And so now, the Detroit Lions have scored two touchdowns in each quarter. They have added every extra point, plus a field goal. And if my arithmetic is correct right now, the score is 45 for Detroit, 14 for Cleveland. The game is being brought to you by High Grade, spelled H-Y-G-R-A-D-E. Try High Grade, West Virginia brand deluxe fan. The Detroit Lions' Jim Martin will again kick off with the scoreboard clock now showing one minute and 40 seconds remaining in the third period. Jimmy Brown and Billy Reynolds are back at the goal line for Cleveland to receive. Jim Martin, the former star at Notre Dame in his eighth year in the National Football League, preparing to kick off for Detroit. The whistle... Martin comes to the ball. His boot sails off to the left. It is picked up at the 10 to the 15 by Reynolds. 20, 25, swings to the left, swarmed under at the 29. John Gordy led the defensive charge along with Jim Martin and Dorn Dibble. Billy Reynolds brings it out from about the 10 to the 28-yard line. The Browns are first and 10 at that point. They're on 28. Late third quarter, and an amazing score of 45 to 14 in favor of Detroit. Renfro flanks to the right, and Brewster splits left. A penalty marker is dropped as Plum passes short. Intended for Lou Carpenter, out on the left flat. Two penalty markers were dropped. The right end of Cleveland, Lou Carpenter, rather Preston Carpenter is called for offside and is indicated now by referee Ronald Gibbs. Joe Schmidt, the defensive captain, has told the referee he does not wish to accept the penalty. It will be second down and ten and an incomplete pass. Milt Plum at quarterback. The running backs are Jimmy Brown and Lou Carpenter. Guard Fred Robinson comes rushing in from the Cleveland Brown bench with instructions from Paul Brown. Renfro breaks huddle and again flanks outside to the right. The ends are fairly tight. A five-man line for Detroit. The snap. Off to the left comes Jimmy Brown to the 30. Wrestles away from one man to the 35 and spins up to the 40. 
He picks up enough yardage for a first down at the Brown 40-yard line where Terry Barr of the Lions secondary brings him down. And referee Gibbs now indicates first down Cleveland at the 40. Less than a minute remaining, according to that clock on the scoreboard, in this third quarter. That, like the second period, has seen the Browns score one touchdown and add an extra point, and the Lions score two touchdowns and add both extra points. Official attendance paid, 55,263. Renfro again breaks huddle and flanks to the right, and both ends are fairly tight, although Preston Carper is put a couple of yards at right end. Plum fades to pass. He's back at his 30. He looks. He never gets the pass away. It has fallen on the 32-yard line. It is ruled not a pass, but a fumble. Jerry Perry. A long... Jerry Perry, along with... Uh, I spotted one other number, but now I've lost it. Broke through. It is ruled that Plum's arm was not going forward in the act of passing. Gene Tronin was another Detroit Lion who was in there. And the Lions have converted another play into a break for themselves. And they have possession now at the 32-yard line of Cleveland, with perhaps time enough remaining for one play in this quarter. The gun. That's the end of the third quarter. And the score. The Detroit Lions, 45. The Cleveland Browns, 14. Happy New Year! Say, are you having a New Year's Eve get-together at your house Tuesday night? Well, make it a feast without the fuss with the help of high grades and King and 53 varieties of delicious sliced beets packed in saran or vacuum wrap to keep them fresh. And all beef frankfurters, all beef salami and corned beef brisket, and you're all set for a New Year's Eve feast without the fuss. Just make sure the meats are high grades or Kingans, and the eats will be delicious. We're about ready to go with the fourth quarter here at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. The Lions are leading 45 to 14, and with the roar of a crowd of an excess of 55,000 behind them, the Detroit Lions have the ball at the 32-yard line of the Cleveland Browns, and again, it is my pleasure to call in Bill McCoggan, who will be calling the plays for you here in the fourth period. Bill? Thank you, Ray Scott. All set for the fourth period. The Lions have the ball on the Browns' 32-yard line as a result of the fumble recovery by Jerry Perry. And Big Leon Hart, the former Notre Dame All-American, 6'5", 250 pounds, has come onto the field. He'll be in the fullback spot in place of John Henry Johnson. Doran Devil also in there in place of Jim Doran. Tobin Root will be the quarterback. Gene Gedman the running half. The flanking back will be Middleton. And perhaps sometimes Dibble. Steve Junker is still in there at right end. The score of the football game as we move into the fourth period is the Detroit Lions 45 and the Cleveland Browns 14. It was pointed out earlier this week that the Lion dressing room here at Briggs Stadium was plastered with a sign, remember 1954, the year in which the Browns beat the Lions 56 to 10. And the Lions said they'd be out for revenge, and it looks very much as if that's exactly what they're trying to do. Top the 56 points scored by the Browns against them in 54. The Lions still huddling offensively, while the Browns' defensive line gets set to dig in. Bill Quinlan, Lenny Ford at the ends, Don Colo and Bob Gein are the tackles. The middle guard, Vince Costello, or the middle linebacker, Galen Fiss, and Warner Michaels, the other linebackers. The Lions move up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten on the Browns, 32. Dave Middleton is out to the right. The Lion line is tight. The handoff goes. Fakes to Hart. Rote going back to throw. He throws a long one, and it is another touchdown. 32-yard scoring play. Dave Middleton who has flanked out to the right, went straight down the far sideline and took it in the end zone after he had outrun the Cleveland defense. So the Lions now have a score of 51-14, to 14, and Jim Martin boots it through the upright, and the score is 52-14, to 14. and the Lions fans, some 56,000 strong here at Drake Stadium, still... Chanting, go, 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 as they want the Lions to pile up just as many points as they can here this afternoon. That touchdown comes just about uh, eight seconds into the fourth period. It was the first play of the fourth period. The Lions had the ball first and ten 
on the Browns' 32-yard line, and Tobin Rhodes hit Dave Middleton, the speed boy from Auburn University. Middleton, a medical student during the offseason at the University of Tennessee. So again, Jim Martin, who has had a busy day with that right foot of his, will get set to kick off for the Detroit Lions. And in the background, you can hear the Lions fans chanting, Go, go, go. Jimmy Brown and Billy Reynolds are the deep men for the Cleveland Browns. Martin seeing the ball up at the 40-yard line. Reynolds is on the near side. Jimmy Brown on the far side, down at the Cleveland goal line. The score, Detroit 52. Cleveland 14 in the first minute of play of the fourth period. Martin gets the whistle, moves up on the ball. It's a high kick. It's short this time. Reynolds takes it at the eight-yard line. Straight ahead to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. And there he is hit on a jarring tackle by Darn Dibble or, or Stan Campbell, number 67 and not number 87. The kickoff went to the Browns' eight-yard line. Billy Reynolds came up the middle and cut to his right, but he was hit by Stan Campbell at the 27-yard line. So there are the Browns have it, first and ten on their own 27. Bill Plum, Lou Carpenter, Ray Renfro, Jimmy Brown in the backfield. Plum at quarterback has Renfro flanked out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback. It's Jimmy Brown with it across the 30, up to about the 35 to 37, hit by Terry Barr. Jimmy Brown, the rookie fullback, who is rookie of the year in the National Football League, got the handoff from Bill Plum, went wide to his left, and he got over the 35-yard line to the 36, a gain of nine yards on the play. Second down and one yard to go. Detroit's defense, Darius McCord, Gene Cronin at the ends. The tackles, Gil Maines and Jerry Perry. The Browns at the line of scrimmage. Renfro to the right. The handoff goes to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He goes straight ahead, up over the 40-yard line to about the 42 before he is piled up. It's enough for the first down, of course, since the Browns needed but one yard for the first down. Jim Ray Smith coming in the ball game at right guard, carrying a play from head coach Paul Brown. The Browns up to the line of scrimmage. Hard Hunter is over the ball at center. Plum of the ball. He gives to Lou Carpenter away from one man. He's at the 40 to 45. Cuts back in. Loses his footing as he does so. And the referee rules that he is downed at the 47-yard line. That was Lou Carpenter, the ball carrier. It was Carl Karalevich who covered Carpenter at the 47 as Lou lost his footing in trying to cut to his left. The Lion defensive captain, Joe Schmidt, gives the boys their defensive signals prior to the play, and then when the Browns come up to the line of scrimmage, he also signals the defensive backfield, and uh, sometimes they then move into a new position. Renfro out to the left, the handoff to Luke Carpenter, up the middle, close to the 50-yard line, piled up there by three or four of the Detroit Lions, led by Bob Miller, number 74. Joe Schmidt, the linebacker, also in there. It's a gain of three yards on the play for Lou Carpenter. And it is now going to be third down coming up and about a yard to go. Third and about one. The ball on the 50-yard line. Twelve minutes left to play in this championship football game. The Lions 52 and the Browns 14. One with the ball. He flips to the fullback. Jimmy Brown, he gets around to the right. Comes across to about the 49-yard line in Detroit territory. It's close to a first down, but it looks from our broadcasting vantage point that it is going to be short by about a foot. It was Joe Schmidt, the linebacker, who came in to make the tackle on Jimmy Brown. Brown getting the ball from quarterback Mill Plum, swinging wide to the right. Got just about a yard to the line, 49-yard line, and it's fourth down and less than a yard to go. Fred Robinson in the ball game at right guard. Jim Ray Smith out of there. The Browns out of the huddle. This time the line is tight. The Detroit defense dug in there tightly. Plum calls the signals. He fakes to one man. He's going back to pass. He gets away from a Lion defender. Now he runs for the ball. He's at the 50, the 45, to the 40 in Detroit territory. And he has wrestled to the ground at the 42. But it'll be a first down. Bill Plum faked a running play, sent Jimmy Brown into the center of the line. Then he went back, set up the pass. There was a rush against him. He ducked under a tackler and finally was stopped by Gene Cronin at the 41-yard line in Detroit territory. Mill Plum, the rookie quarterback, showing a slight limp 
He had a muscle cramp earlier in the week during a practice session. The ball in the Detroit 41. It's first and ten for the Browns. Renfro away out to the left. The Lions are up there right now in a seven-man line. The handoff to Carpenter. He finds an opening. He's down to the 30, and there he is hit and hit hard. Carl Karalevich and Gary Lowe's now in there defensively for Detroit making the stop on the play. But Carpenter gets from the 41 down to about the 31. It's going to be close to a first down, but it's second and about a foot. Second and about a foot for the Browns on the Detroit 31. The Browns huddle back at the 40-yard line. Ray Renfro takes the flanking spot out to the left. Preston Carpenter, the right end, is split by about 12 yards. The left end, Brewster, by about three. Plum of the ball. He flips to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He's around the right side. He's at the 30, down to about the 28. And he is hit by Jack Christensen. Christensen just uh, upended him at the 28-yard line. But it'll be enough for the first down as Brown advanced the ball from the 31 to the Detroit 28. First and 10 for the Browns on the line, 28. In the fourth period at Briggs Stadium, ten minutes left to play in the football game. And it's the Lions 52. The Cleveland Browns 14 as the Lions have taken advantage of every break which has come their way this afternoon. And they have made some of them for themselves. Cleveland to the line of scrimmage. Renfro to the left. Preston Carpenter, the right end splits. Plum calls the signals, fakes to Brown, he gives to Lou Carpenter, wide to the left, he's at the 30, he's down to the 25, and he is dropped at the 25 by three tacklers. Yale Larry was the first man to get him. There's a penalty marker on the play back here at the line of scrimmage, so let us see what the call is going to be. Terry Barr also in on the tackle. Carpenter had moved the ball to about the 25-yard line for a gain of three yards. There's a holding penalty, however, against the Detroit Lions. So now the ball is brought down very close to the 20-yard line. And it'll be a first down on defensive holding, an automatic first down for the Browns at the 20-yard line. First and 10 for Cleveland on the Detroit 20. The ball at the inbounds marker from the far sideline. The Browns moving from our left to our right here in the fourth period. Renfro flanks out to the right. Deep Brewster at the left end is split. Milt Plum, the quarterback, calls the signals. He takes, he gives to Jimmy Brown the fullback, and Brown is stopped standing up as he gets inside the 25 to about the 23. Gene Cronin was in there to make the tackle. Jimmy Brown... Gets a couple of yards. Mark it at the 24, a gain of just a yard. Brown is 6'2", 224 pounds. Makes his home in Hempstead, Long Island. The ball on the 19-yard line, I should say. A gain of a yard for Brown. Second down. And nine yards to go. Cleveland out of the huddle once again. Art Hunter, the former Notre Dame All-American, over the ball at center. Renfro, the flanker, but just by a couple of yards outside the right end this time. Plum back to pass. He throws. Preston Carpenter has it at the 15, and down he goes at the 13. But again, there is a marker on this play. Jack Christensen made the tackle for the Detroit Lions as the right end. Preston Carpenter hit for the near sideline. The pass was good to the 13, but this time there's going to be a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. And it's a long one. Moving the ball back to the 34-yard line in Detroit territory. A holding penalty against the Browns. And so the ball is spotted at the 34. Second down. And about 25 yards, 23 yards to go for the first down. The Browns settling at the Detroit 45. Their backfield has Mill Clement quarterback. Lou Carpenter and Renfro the have. Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Renfro flanks out to the right. He's being covered over there by Jack Christensen. Blum takes the ball from center. He goes back to pass. His protection breaks down. He starts to run with it. He laterals off. Now to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He's all the way back at the 50-yard line. He gets the block. Now he starts to his right, and he is dropped at the 50-yard line. Bob Miller made the tackle. Mel Plum went back to pass. 
His protection broke down. He bumped into one of his own men as he started to run with the ball, and he turned and tried a lateral to Jimmy Brown. Brown couldn't get his hands on it. Finally picked it up at about the Detroit 48. Started uh, to look around for blockers, but was dropped for a loss. All the way to the 50-yard line. So it is now third down. And 40 yards to go. The series started at the 20-yard line. The Browns huddle at their own 40-yard line. The ball right at the midfield stripe. Eight minutes left to play in the football game. Double wing. Carpenter out to the left. Renfro to the right. Both ends split by about five yards. A three-man line for Detroit. Plum on the quarterback draws at the 40. He's out of the 35, down to the 31-yard line, and he is tackled. Bob Long, number 86. The Lions linebacker on the left side was the man who made the tackle. The Lions, when it is obvious that it's a passing situation, use only a three-man line and send their linebackers in the total defensive backfield back there to cover against the receivers. It's now fourth down. One yard line. The Browns move out of the huddle, and again it's the double wing. Lou Carpenter to the left, Ray Renfro to the right. The Lions now are in a six man line, and the rush is on Mill Plum. He throws one right over the middle to Preston, uh, to Lou Carpenter. Preston Carpenter, rather, number 40. He gets inside the 25 to the 23, and there he's dropped, and the Lions take over. The Detroit team had the rush on that time. Plum did get the pass away over the middle. The game is being brought to you by High Grade, spelled H-Y-G-R-A-D-E, and it's Kingan, Carson's, and Deerfoot Farms Division. The ball moved to the 23-yard line, but it was not enough for the first down, and so Detroit takes over. The Lions leading by a score of 52-14 to 14 with seven minutes left to play in this football game. Gene Gedman comes racing off the Detroit bench, and the Lions are now going to call for a timeout. With seven minutes left to play in this football game, the Lions are taking time out, and the score is Detroit, 52, Cleveland, 14. How was your breakfast bacon this morning? Too salty? Well, then, the next time any shopping's done for bacon, better buy High Grades or Kingan's Reliable Sliced Bacon. It's the sweetest-tasting bacon you can buy. Why? Because it's sweetenized. High Grade takes choice bacon and cures it with its very own sweetenizing process that makes every slice tasty but never salty. We're so sure you'll love High Grade or King and Reliable Sliced Bacon, you get double your money back if you don't agree it's the sweetest tasting bacon you've ever eaten. So the very next time, be sure you buy High Grade's or King and Reliable Sliced Bacon, the only bacon that's sweetenized. Remember, double your money back if you don't agree it's the sweetest tasting bacon you've ever eaten. High grade in its king and division, serving the nation with quality meats from 51 plants coast to coast. High grade. The Cleveland Browns now have Bobby Freeman, the rookie from Auburn, at the left safety position in their defensive backfield. The Lions have the ball on their own 23-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. And the scoreboard clock, which of course is unofficial time, shows seven minutes remaining in the game. And the Lions are in front by a score of 52-14. to Detroit to the line of scrimmage. Cassidy in the ball game. He's flanked out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback, Leon Hart. And Hart is nailed as he gets just about a yard to the 24-yard line. It's Gene Gedman, not Leon Hart, the ball carrier. And now Jerry Rykow comes into the ball game. Tobin Roach goes out. Listen to the hand he gets. <laughs> Tobin Roach doing a great job for the Lions here this afternoon, and he gets a well deserved round of applause as he leaves the playing field. Rykow, the former Iowa Stars at quarterback. Cassidy is out to the right. The handoff goes to Gedman. Wide to the left. He's at the 25 to the 28, the 30-yard line. Vince Costello wrestles him to the ground there along with a couple of other Browns. Junior Wren, the safety man, and Don Paul, the right halfback. There's another flag on the play, however, and it is going to be a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. 
Gedman had moved the ball to the 30-yard line, but the Browns are now penalized to the Detroit 44. Illegal use of hands against the Browns. And the Lions have it first down, 10 yards to go, on their own 44, with Jerry Reichow in there at quarterback. And the Lions have all but wrapped up the World Championship for Pro Football. The Lions to the line of scrimmage. Reichow at quarterback calls the signals. Cassidy is out to the right once again. Reichow hands off this time to Gedman, and he cuts into the left side of his line, then moves forward over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. There's a flag on the play on this play. Bob Gain, the defensive tackle on the left side for Cleveland, made the tackle along with Walter Michaels. But there's another penalty against the Browns. The ball was carried by Gedman to the 43. The Browns are penalized to the 44-yard line. It's first down and five yards to go. First and five on the 44-yard line in Detroit territory. The blue jerseyed lines out of the huddle. Middleton, the flanker out to the right. Cassidy out to the left. Reichow calls the signals. There's another flag. Reichow carries the ball behind the left side of his line. Gets to the 46-yard line. A gain of a couple of yards on the play, but there's a flag on the playing field, so let's see what this penalty is going to be. Again, it was Bob Gain, the left tackle for the Browns, who made the stop. The officials... Now up there talking to the Browns captain, Don Colo. And the penalty is against the Detroit Lions. Colo still conferring with the referee. And now the ball is moved back to the 39-yard line, a five-yard penalty for illegal procedure against the Lions. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Of course, on that penalty, the down remains the first down. Charlie Oni is in the ball game for Detroit. Reichow calls the signals. He gives to Gedman. He goes wide to his right. There are flags on this play. Gedman gets away from one man over near the far sideline and finally is pushed out of bounds by two or three of the Browns. Bobby Freeman, Warren Lahr over there. Also Walter Michaels. Walter Michaels was the first man to get the shot at Gedman. He slowed him up and then Bobby Freeman and Warren Lahr came along to knock him out of bounds. At about the 37-yard line, it would be a loss of a couple of yards on the play, but there was a penalty marker. The Detroit team offside, but it was declined by the Browns, so it is second down and about 11 and a half yards to go. The ball at the 37 and a half in Detroit territory. Detroit out of the huddle once again. Gatsky over the ball. Darn Dibble is out to the right. The inside flanker. Reichow going back to pass now. He gets protection now. He throws. It is no good. Intended for Gene Gedman across the 50-yard line in Brown's territory. He was covered by Junior Wren, but the pass was off the target. Gene Gedman, the intended receiver, along the near sideline, just as he moved into Cleveland territory inside the 50-yard line. So now it'll be third down. And 11 and a half still to go for the Lions. With less than six minutes to play in this football game, it's the Detroit Lions. 52, the Cleveland Browns 14. Jim Doran back in the ball game for Detroit. Gene Gedman is out of there. Cassidy is the running back. Reichow calls the signals. The flanker is out to the right. Reichow looks like he starts to run with the ball, but he has dropped at just about the line of scrimmage, the 37-yard line. Again, it's Bob Gain. The tackle driving in along with Bill Quinlan. Reichow apparently trying to go on a quarterback draw, but it did not work as he was stopped at just about the line of scrimmage. So now it is fourth down for the Lions. And with a lead of 52 to 14, they send Yale Larry into the football game. Larry stands back at his 22-yard line. Chet Hanulak and Billy Reynolds, the deep men for the Browns. Larry gets the snap. He gets the kick away. It's a good one. Hanulak signals for a fair catch and takes it at the Browns 31. 
So Larry punts to the Cleveland 31-yard line. The rush was on by the Browns. Mel Campbell was leading that rush in on Yale Larry. But Larry managed to get the punt away, a 31-yard kick, as Hangulak took it on the fair catch at the Browns' 31-yard line. So it's Cleveland's ball, first and ten on their own 31, with just five minutes left to play in this football game. Renfro is flanked out to the right. Out to the left is Lou Carpenter. Milt Plummett, quarterback, calls the signals. He goes back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Almost intercepted by Gary Lowe. It was Jack Christensen who hit Ray Renfro just about the time he was reaching for the ball. The ball bounded high in the air, and Gary Lowe made a diving try for it, but he could not grab it. So it goes as an incompleted forward pass. Plum intended for Renfro. And it'll be second down, ten yards to go for the Browns on their own 31-yard line. As the Lions are within four and a half minutes of being champions of the National Football League. The handoff this time goes to Jimmy Brown, the fullback, wide to his left. He gets to the 35, still on his feet, across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Terry Barr there to make the tackle for the Detroit Lions. So Brown picked up five yards. It'll be third down and five yards to go for Cleveland. The ball on the Browns' 36-yard line. Jerry Perry was in on the tackle for the Detroit Lions. Cleveland's backfield right now. Milt Plummett, quarterback. Lou Carpenter and Ray Renfro are the halves. And Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Renfro goes out to the right in a flanking spot. The left-hand Brewster is split by about ten. Plum takes. He fakes to Lou Carpenter. He goes back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Intended for Brewster. The left end as Pete broke over the middle at the 50-yard line. But the pass was off the target. So now it is going to be fourth down, and still a little better than five yards to go. Jack Christensen was defending on Pete Brewster on the play, but it was not necessary for him to break it up since the pass didn't come too close to Brewster. Terry Barr and Yale Larry go back into the double safety for the Detroit Lions. Kenny Combs coming in to do the kicking for the Browns since it is fourth down and about five and a half yards to go. Less than four minutes remaining in this championship football game. Tons goes back to his 20-yard line. There's the snap from Tommy Catlin at center. It's off the side of the foot of Tons, and it is coming over near the near sideline and going out of bounds on the Detroit 44. Kenny Tons kicking to the Lion 44-yard line. It went out of bounds. A 20-yard kick. And Detroit takes over. The Lion fans are still urging... They're heroes to pick up at least another touchdown in the remaining three minutes and 47 seconds. The ball on the line 44. Jerry Rykow is the quarterback. Jim Doran goes out to the right. Dave Middleton to the left. Middleton is the flanking back. Doran is at right end. Rykow barks the signals. He takes. He hands off to Cassidy. He's at the 50, the 45, the 40, and he is dropped at the 35-yard line. Wrestled down there by four or five of the Browns was Don Paul, who made the initial stop. Rykow started to run to his right, spun around and handed the ball to Cassidy, and he found a big hole in the middle of the Browns' line, and Hopalong knew what to do with it, and he went all the way to the Browns' 35-yard line. 21-yard run for Cassidy. On the 35, it's first and 10 for Detroit. Rykow again calls the signals. The flanker this time is out to the right. Rykow with the ball. Rolls to his right. Throws a pass downfield. It is no good. Just over the outstretched hands of Dave Middleton at the 10-yard line. Defending on the play was Bobby Freeman. Freeman and Middleton were teammates at Auburn University during their collegiate days. Jerry Rykow's forward pass. As he aimed for Middleton, Middleton was going down the far sideline, but it was no good. Now there's a conference back up here at the line of scrimmage. There's a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. And it carries the ball down to the 20-yard line, the 21-yard line. Again, illegal use of hands. The Browns penalized to their own 21-yard line. And it, of course, is a first down. 
first and ten. And now the Lions are in good position to get that extra touchdown that their fans have been looking for. Duran out to the left. Right cow calls the signals. He takes. Again, he hands to Cassidy on that same play. And Cassidy gets to about the 17-yard line. The only difference was that this time, Rykow was moving to his left as he handed in back of him to Cassidy. Cassidy got into about the 17-yard line. Vince Costello, Don Colo, and Waller Michaels all making the tackle. A gain of three yards for Cassidy, and it's second down and seven for the Lions. Middleton goes to the flanking spot. Out to the right, Dorn Dibble is the right end. The left hand split by about five yards. Rika rolls to his right. He throws. There's a man there. Cassidy has it for a touchdown. talking about sweet revenge, and the Lions have now topped the 56 points scored against them by the Browns in 1954, because the score of this football game is 58 to 14, and Jim Martin will have the opportunity to make it 59. The ball will be held by Tobin Road at the 10-yard line. Time called here momentarily. The fans have thrown some debris into the end zone at the end of the field, where Martin will be doing his kicking. The scoreboard clock shows two minutes and 20 seconds. Some Detroit fans have broken down out of the stands and are now moving up behind the Lion bench. Signals being called for the extra point. Gunnar Gatsky over the ball at center. It's spotted. It's booted. It's good. The point is good, and the score is now 59 to 14. The Detroit Lions 59, the Browns 14. I would like to say a couple of words about high grades, all beef frankfurters. Hot dog! My grade is high grade, they're all pure beef. With that flavor you simply can't beat. At the school or play, any time of the day. I always ask for high grade when it's time to eat. High grade, high grade, high grade, high grade. I always ask for high grade when it's time to eat. Your kids love them. I say kids love them. They go for that tangy chuck wagon flavor. And what's more, high grades all beef frankfurters are good, solid, bodybuilding, protein food. And incidentally, high grade frankfurters are so easy to fix. Serve some tonight. Excuse me, Mom. Did you say we're having high grades all beef frankfurters for supper tonight? Yes, darling, we are. Hot dog! <laughs> Jim Martin has the ball teed up on the 40-yard line for another kickoff with two minutes and some 20 seconds left. And Milk Campbell and Jimmy Brown are deep for the Cleveland Browns. The score is 59 to 14. The Detroit Lions over the Cleveland Browns. Martin waiting for the whistle now from the referee, Ron Gibbs. Jimmy Brown is on the far side in receiving position for Cleveland. Milk Campbell on the near side. Campbell, the former Olympic decathlon champion. Martin Booms won. It's a high one. Jimmy Brown takes it at the six-yard line. He's to the 10, the 15, the 20. Moves to his left and is tackled at the 23, the 24-yard line. The kick went to the Browns' five-yard line. And Jimmy Brown returned it from that spot to the 23-yard line, where it's the Browns' first down, 10 yards to go with a little better than two minutes remaining to be played in this football game. The officials actually right now are signaling the benches that we have but two minutes. A Detroit fan racing across the field with outstretched arms to greet his heroes on the far side. Bobby Lane on crutches over there, of course, tries to get out of his way. The Browns move up to the line of scrimmage. Blum still in there at quarterback. Renfro is out to the right. The left hand Brewster is split. Blum hands to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He gets away from Roger Zetkoff, fumbles it, however, and it drops on it at the 17-yard line. Jimmy Brown taking from Mill Plum, the quarterback, trying to get around the left end. He was hit by Zetkoff. He bounced off Zetkoff, but the ball bounced off him. Jerry Perry tried to get the ball, but Jimmy Brown fell on it at the 16-yard line. 
in Cleveland Territory. A minute and a half showing on the scoreboard clock, which is unofficial time. The official time is down on the playing field. Renfro, the flanker to the right. Both ends split. Blum takes. Rolls to his right. He has protection. He throws to Lou Carpenter, who has bounced out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Jim Martin, who has seen little action defensively for the Lions this afternoon, was the man who bounced Carpenter out of bounds. Now fans are pouring down on the field from all angles. It's third down and about eight yards to go for Cleveland. As the ball is at the 24-yard line. The Browns huddle back inside the 15. Now they move out of there. Renfro flanked out to the left. The right end, Preston Carpenter, is split. Plum takes. He gives to Luke Carpenter. Carpenter wide to his left. Gets the block. He's at the 30, the 35. Cuts to his right and is dropped at the 39-yard line. It's Gary Lowe of the Detroit secondary who made the tackle on the play. It's the first down, of course. Carpenter swinging wide to his left behind good blocking. Got to the 39-yard line in Cleveland Territory. And now we have just about 45 seconds left to play in the football game. A dejected Waller Michaels, the only member of the Browns sitting on the bench on the far side of the field. Ray Renfro out to the right. The handoff goes to Lou Carpenter. He swings wide, gets to the 40-yard line, and there he is hit by three or four of the Lions. Gene Cronin led the charge in, in there for Detroit. 20 seconds left to play in the football game. Gil Maines also in on the stop. The ball is spotted at the 40-yard line, at the 41-yard line. A gain of two for Carpenter. Second and about seven, and time is running out, and the Detroit Lions are champions of the National Football League as they have handled the Browns in decisive fashion here this afternoon. And there's the end of the game. The final score, the Detroit Lions 58, the Cleveland Browns 14. We'll be back in a moment for the final wrap-up of today's game. I would like to say a couple of words about high-grade canned meat. Delicious! High-grade is high-grade, the best canned meat with that flavor you simply can't eat. After school or play, any time of the day, I always ask for high-grade when it's time to eat. Kids love it. KP Party Loaf is a super special blend of your two favorite meats, pork and beef. And it's canned with super speed for super flavor. Because the quicker meat's canned, the better it tastes. That's why KP Party Loaf is such a luscious luncheon meat. Super thrifty, too. You'll love high grades. The only meats canned with super speed for super flavor. High grade, high grade, high grade, is high grade. How is that for high grade? Because it's all good meat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 1957 professional championship game is now history. A crowd of over 55,000 here at Bridge Stadium, Detroit, I believe at many points in today's game could not quite believe what they were seeing. A Detroit Lion team that has won the professional championship by a score of 59 to 14. The last pro championship here in Detroit came in 1953 against these same Cleveland Browns when the game was won by a score of 17 to 16. Then came 54, the last time these two teams met in pro championship play, and the Browns won it by a score of 56 to 10. To pick out the usual highlights in a game like this would be completely impossible. Time would not permit. The score tells the story. As we gaze across the field here from our vantage point on the west side of Briggs Stadium, we look at that scoreboard, which tells 17 points in the first period for Detroit and then 14 points in each of the second, third, and fourth periods. The Browns, meanwhile, were able to score single touchdowns in only the second and third periods of play. And so, the Detroit Lions, who manufactured early breaks, come on to win the professional championship in the first year that George Wilson served as their head football coach. And so, I believe a tremendous tribute would be in order from both Bill McCoggan and myself, speaking for pro football fans everywhere, to George Wilson and his Detroit Lion coaching staff and players 
President Edwin Anderson and their board of directors, and to the folks of Detroit as we congratulate them on winning the professional football championship. And so right now, we would like to give our thanks to our spotters, Bill Kelly for the Browns and Ed Taylor for the Lions. Our statistician was Jim Drainer. Our engineer was Joe Sterniolo. This broadcast was produced by NBC Sports Editor Paul Jonas. Speaking for Bill McCoggan and yours truly, Ray Scott. Once again, the final score. The Detroit Lions 59, the Cleveland Browns 14. This portion of today's World's Championship game was brought to you direct from Detroit over the NBC radio and television networks by the High Grade Food Products Corporation and its Kingan, Carstens, and Deerfoot Farms divisions. High Grade, serving the nation with quality meats from 51 plants coast to coast, wishes you and their distributors and the food merchants of America a very happy New Year. This is the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.